Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Jenny Taft. This podcast is the full show from today's episode of Undisputed from start to finish. We've got a busy slate, so skip Shannon. Let's get to it. Good morning. Welcome to Undisputed. We are live from LA. I'm Jenny Taft here with Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp. Good morning, guys. Good morning. What a night last night was. Night. Cups. What are you doing? You got to touch cups. You can't touch hands now. We got to touch cups. Why not? Cause. You know, we got to err on the side. I love of, you. You got to err on the side of a culture. So today we're about to talk definitely about what happened last night. But for the record, we're also pretty soon going to get back to talking about Dak and Tom Brady and NFL free agents. Yep. I think so right. here we go. Oh, this is new territory for all of us. We're going to continue to navigate, but we do have a packed show. Let's get to it. Is Dak a bigger free agent than Tom Brady? Clearly will go there. Should yep. the Titans prioritize Ryan Tannehill over yep. Brady? And how yep. big of a yep. loss would losing Amari Cooper and Byron Jones be in Dallas? But first, we will start with an unprecedented night in sports because the NBA announced that it's suspending this season for an undetermined amount of time after Utah's Rudy Gobert tested positive for coronavirus prior to the game between the Jazz and the Thunder last night. That game was postponed just moments before tip-off and both teams were quarantined in the arena. There were four games being played when the league made its announcement and all were completed. In addition, any team that faced the Jazz in the last 10 days must now self quarantine. So Shannon, I start with you, your reaction to how this unfolded. It was strange. It seemed surreal um, that a season is postponed. Um, Skip, this is not a sports issue. This is a public health issue. And to see this unfold, because you start, you hear him says, okay, now the media is not allowed in the locker room. You have to go to a designated area. Then the NBA earlier yesterday said they're going to start I think the uh, the Warriors were the first team to say they're going to play their games yep. in front of an you know with no crowd, mm-hmm. and okay, so every start that starts picking up steam. That was supposed to be tonight. Tonight, right? Yep. That starts picking up steam, mm-hmm. and then the next thing you know, okay, the season is suspended. Skip, I think the thing is, is that anytime a situation happens, if it doesn't affect you directly or someone you know, I don't know if you give it the seriousness that it deserves. Mm-hmm. Because we hear about this virus, Skip, what that happened in China, and it's in Italy, it's in Germany, yep. or it's happening in America, but it's not happening to someone you know. You're right. Rudy Gobert getting this virus mm-hmm. gave it realness. Mm-hmm. You hear Tom Hanks and his wife in Australia contracting this disease, I mean mm-hmm. disease, this virus, it gives it realness. It gives it, it puts a face to it. Hold on. This is for real. This is not yep. a joke. Because I think sometimes, people, Skip, in, in the climate that we're in, a lot of things get tugged one way or another. And you say, well, well, how much of it is real? How much of it is not? You know, yeah. per- hyperbole, how much is just getting added on as you're trying to politicize it? Sure. But I think now we have a realness to it. The NFL did, the NFL, the NBA did the only thing that it could do, Skip, mm-hmm. because now one of their, Rudy had this. And so what are you going to do? You could have like, well, there's only one guy. And then one guy turns to five, five turns to 10, 20, 30, and now you, you, you don't want that. Yeah. So they did the only thing that they could do. They canceled the seat, they, or suspended the season yeah. until they can gather more information. Mm-hmm. How do we slow this? How do we p- protect our players? Because that's the number one priority, Skip, is to protect their players. Adam Silver has the obligation mm-hmm. to protect his 450 to 500 players. And I think he did that. Um, you know, you hear, you know, LeBron was like on Sunday, you know, after the Friday game, he's like, now nah, I want to play. But I think once he started getting the right, the correct information, Skip, mm-hmm. this thing is an ep- epidemic. Yeah. And the NBA did the right thing, Adam Silver. And I'm not going to be surprised if, if more uh, uh, sport, sports leagues yeah. don't take notice. You know, yeah. baseball has a season coming up. Yeah. You know, you still got soccer going on. They've canceled some of the soccer uh, uh, matches, Skip. But I'm going to be surprised if this if they don't shut this thing down for for a minute until they gather more information, mm-hmm. how to slow it, yep. and then move forward from there. I hear you. So, for me, last night was unlike any night I've ever experienced in my many, many years of covering, watching sports. Mm-hmm. It was stunning. It was sobering. In the end, it was sad reality, and I still haven't quite gotten over last night. Right. In my many years covering sports, 
I've been through what, what are called work stoppages, right. strikes or lockouts. Right. You've been through them. Mm -hmm. I've been through way too many of sure. them. It sounds like, on a, on a positive note, maybe the NFL is not going to have one of those. Right. Maybe we're going to have a quick agreement and a new CBA for the next 10 years. Right. But in this case, this was so different than a work stoppage because in a work stoppage, it was always about money. It was about greed on one side or the other. So as a fan, I could either blame the owners or blame the players. You could pick a side. I could pick a side. Last night, I could only blame real life. Yep. Right? Yep. So... For the first time in a long time on the on the sports front, I guess it, you'd say the first time ever, real life struck. And I can only speak from my perspective of, as you know, and people who watch the show know, I'm as crazed and passionate and hardcore sports fan as you will find. I am fanatic. I like my movies, but I love my games. <laughs> I just... I don't miss games. Every night I'm watching, it feels like, nearly every game that's being played. So to a fault, I find myself living in a sports bubble. Right. You like politics. I don't even like politics. I don't follow it that closely. <laughs> I just follow sports. Right. And to a fault, I'm sort of protected by my bubble. Right. And all of a sudden, last night, my bubble got punctured and invaded by the realist of life. Basically infected. Infected. It got infected. And it became life and death mm -hmm. last night, right before my very eyes. So I'll be the first to concede that over this past weekend, I was certainly concerned right. about the spreading virus. Mm -hmm. But did I really acknowledge? No. Did I give in to it? Did I, did I really accept the gravity? That's a good point. No, I did not. I told you both last Friday night, even though I had to talk her into it, I, I talked Ernestine into going with me to a Vanderbilt UCLA baseball game here in LA at Jackie Robinson Stadium. Sure. And she was a little concerned because during the day, there had been a report that three UCLA students had been tested for coronavirus, just right. tested. Right. And I said, it'll be okay. It's just, you know, you, you're in the bubble in right. your head of, it's not going to happen to us. Right. Well, are you sure? Oh, we'll go. It was sold out and it was overflowing and it was all time packed to Jackie Robinson for number two Vanderbilt versus number six UCLA. Mm -hmm. Saturday, we went to a movie. It was pretty packed. Mm -hmm. So I didn't sense any panic around right. us, any real urgency to stay out of the public. To echo what you're saying, Skip, because I was out also on uh, last weekend, you know, with training and, and did that, and I didn't see that people were panicked. No. Nope. They went about their normal nope. day. Now, I'm nope. sure that it was on, you know, people washing their hands and pure up because you can't find any of that stuff on the shelf. Right. So clearly they're, they're taking it, okay. but they went about their daily lives. So yesterday I heard, okay, so the Warriors game tomorrow night, which is going to be tonight. tonight. Mm -hmm. Oh, so they're not going to have any fans. Right. Really? That's interesting. Right. But did it hit me? Nope. Didn't hit me. And maybe you can argue that NBA owners, sort of like me, had heads in sand. Mm -hmm. Maybe all day yesterday they had heads in sand. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden I'm watching and something is going on at the Thunder game. Well, what is going on? Right. Wait, they've suspended the game. At least they're not going to start it on time. Well, surely. That's, right. No, no, i will be right. okay. Mm -hmm. One thing leads to another and suddenly... After I just heard that Tom Hanks and Rita Wilson, his wife, in Australia had tested positive. So that, that puts some face to it. But, sure. but they're in Australia. Right. So I'm thinking, okay, it's Australia. What are you doing? You shouldn't have traveled, Tom. Right. You know, yeah. right. you're asking for it, right? right? Too far from yeah. us. Seemed too far from us. Right. And all of a sudden, to your point, for me, this virus had a face. And it was the face of of a two-time defensive player of the year who's led this league in block shots. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying he's a superstar, but he's a star. Right. And sure. we all know who Rudy Gobert is. Correct. Correct. And we know what he looks like. Mm -hmm. And there's a face to coronavirus for me because I live in the sports world. Right. Oh, now you've hit me right between my eyes. Mm -hmm. 
I am sitting back in my chair and maybe 15 minutes pass and all of a sudden I'm talking to our producer Azzy on the phone trying to plan today's show. We have like nine basketball topics we're, we're thinking about. Right. And he says, uh-oh, I just got an email. The whole season has been, no, no, no. Mm -hmm. I'm like, no, you're, you, you got that wrong. No, I'm, he said, I'll send it to you right now. Right. I open it up, official NBA memo. Mm -hmm. It's over, at right. least for the foreseeable future. future. Correct. At least for two weeks and who knows how much longer. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay, now I am rocked back by, oh, this is happening. And for me, it, it was it was Kobe-esque in this way. Obviously, Kobe was the, uh, an all-time tragedy. But to your point and to you, where you live, all of a sudden, it hit me that a star athlete got this. Well, then anybody can get it. And Correct. You know how we reacted right. after Kobe. Wait, if, if he and his daughter can die in a plane crash, he's invincible. And right? That's, and that's, that's how people look at athletes. Yeah. Yep, they're superhuman. Hubert's is nothing, super nothing, nothing happens Rudy to Rudy Gobert and... What was so chilling to me was that just on Monday, Rudy Gobert himself had scoffed at the coronavirus. You were joking. Oh, did you see? Good. Do we have the video yeah. of what, what he did? It didn't age after, well, this video. Well, how about this? He's, he's scoffing at it. So he says, oh, I'll, I'll joke with you guys. I'll touch all of your microphones yeah. and <laughs> phones, right? Yep. I'll touch them all. That's not good. Huh, not good. That wasn't a good look. It's staggering. Right. And it's almost like, it's like he dared the devil and right. the devil said, okay, watch this. Yep. And Rudy Gobert became the first victim, if you will, right. of coronavirus. Now, to, just to keep this in some perspective, I did like what Evan Fournier, his f teammate on uh, right. Team France tweeted, right. obviously Orlando Magic. Mm -hmm. He tweeted last night, or may, uh, it was late last night, was just on the phone with Rudy he is doing good, man. Let's not panic, everyone. Love you all. Okay, I appreciate the perspective of that. And yet, for so long there, especially last weekend, I was underreacting. I don't want to overreact now, but I am definitely reacting to this. And that was the problem, Skip. Yeah. I don't think enough people took this serious. Correctly. And yes. then now, yes. because like I said, until yes. it actually happens to you or yep. someone you actually know, yep. then you put the prop, you give it the proper due diligence that it deserved. Skip, you know, um, being from uh, South Georgia, tornadoes are very prominent. And you hear well, there's a tornado going to uh, step down in the area. Well, but it's going to hit me until they pull the roof off your house or the trees on top of your house. Then you're like, oh, oh, okay. Hey, coming from Oklahoma, tornado alley. alley. Yeah, so yeah. You, you know uh, it, you They know were well like about in that. my backyard in right. the springtime. So like. now Rudy, Go an NBA player, actually has the virus. Yeah. So now you're like... Okay, Rudy Gobert got it. NBA was doing all the, his due diligence, trying to take uh, precautions to make sure it didn't happen, mm -hmm. and it did happen. So, okay, let me give this thing the proper respect that it deserves. Okay. And, and for me and everybody, like, all of a sudden started. So everybody's start, starting to wash their hands for 20 seconds. So were you not washing your hands? <laughs> I, I'm just trying to... I'm, I thought of that, yeah. I'm like, come on, people. Mm. But, but Skip, so, so look... Then I'm having to read through the evening that, or here on TV, mm -hmm. that the Thunder and the Jazz are basically quarantined in the arena and being tested with the swabs in their, up into Jeez. their cheeks, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And they're being tested for fever with just hands on temples right. and whatnot. And I'm thinking, the Jazz and the Thunder? And then it is reported that, I don't know what ended up happening, the, the Jazz couldn't figure out whether they could fly home. They might have to bus back to Salt Lake. It's, yeah. okay, this is gravity. Exactly. It is here. It is real. And we all have to deal with it now on all of our levels. And then there was an official that ref the game in Utah yeah. that was about to ref the game last night. I think it was New Orleans, right? When the Pelicans At went? Sac. Uh, At Sacramento. At Sacramento. Yeah. Uh -huh. So he was there. So once they got wind of that, yeah. they're like, well, hold on, wait a minute. It's like, no, nah, we're crazy. done. Okay, and I'm because all the games were supposed to be concluded last night, and the sus suspended season would start today. So I was still trying to hang on to my bubble for the late game, thinking, okay, you know how much I love Zion. Right. At least I'll get to see Zion one, one last, last time. time. Right. And then, predictably, right on schedule, nope, it's nope. over. Mm -hmm. And the last I saw of an NBA player, Lonzo, Lonzo Ball, right. came out of the locker room, 
and was just shooting little shots by himself. Right. And I'm thinking, does he does he know what's happened? I, I guess he does. Right. And I guess he just said, I want to get a few shots up right. before we have to get out of here, right? right? I guess they were going to be delayed uh, three hours. Considering, Skip, they had expected to play a game. Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, they, I, maybe the plane wasn't there, the plane that was going to come take them back. Maybe it wasn't there. Maybe it was on, en route. But now uh, Lonzo's like, well, I'm just going to sit in the locker room and right. just, you know, know, just I know. Just He's think just about all alone out there right. shooting. And it was such a sad moment. And you love the NBA. I really love the NBA. Mm-hmm. I'm going to miss it dearly. And it that was a very sad moment because I knew – that what what I was seeing that video feed right. of Lonzo shoot he was shooting like four foot shots. Right. That's the last for a while I'm going to see of an NBA player shooting. Shots. I think because it escalated so quickly, Skip. Yep. Think about what we were talking about. We saw Sunday the Lakers Clippers and how we talked about that on Monday, and then we saw the schedule on on Tuesday. To here we are Thursday. <sighs> Not even 48 hours. Even just in the last quickly. couple hours last right. night. So, wow. and, and to, like I said, Skip, and, and, and it brought reality. It gave it realness because I don't think enough people took it serious. I, look, you don't need to panic because, like I said, Skip, when something is happening overseas, okay. that's overseas. But I'm here in America. Mm-hmm. And even if you hear about cases, there's a, well, I think there was 122 in California and this many in Texas. I don't know anybody. Yeah. So we good. Yeah. Now. <sighs> So now the NCAA has got some hard decisions to make because it's hard for me to believe they're going to go forward with March Madness. So far, we have heard nothing from them. They got to shut it down. They got to shut it down. And did you see what happened to Fred Hoiberg last night, who I covered when he was a Chicago Bull, known as the mayor, did not look good. So Fred Hoiberg, also with his head in the sand, Mm -hmm. his head aching because he had some kind of flu-like symptoms, he goes out on the bench and tries to tough it out and can't make it and goes to the hospital Mm -hmm. And obviously, everybody's thinking the worst. Right. He did not test positive. He just had the flu. Right. Which I'm sure a lot of people are going through flu thinking, oh, my God, what's happening? But Fred Hoiberg, you can't do that right now. Right. You can't subject everybody around you to your symptoms. If you have the symptoms, you got to stay out of harm's way. Yep, I agree with you. The NCA and this president, Mark Emmert, is going to have to cancel this thing because he looks greedy. There's no other reason. I mean, why? If they say, if the CDC says your large gatherings yeah. should be prohibited, I know. so why would you? you oh, well, it's, theoretically, we're only going to have 125 tickets for family and staff. Bro, let it go. You it's, let it go. It, it, it's okay. Yep. If there's not a 2020 national champion, yep. it's okay. Skip the world. <laughs> Life will go on. Life will go on. Do I feel for those kids like the Dayton yes, kids? Yes. Dayton's got a really good team. They, they could yes. make a deep yes. run. Yes. yes. And now, probably they're not going to be allowed to make right. any run. Right. Sad, but true. Yes. Real it's life sad. has struck. It, it happens sometimes. Yeah. You remember uh, when they, we boycotted the 80 Olympics? I remember it well. Wow. You know, we didn't send we a, we didn't, didn't go. We didn't send a team to, to Moscow. And it was very sad. Right. And I was in the middle of it because I was scheduled to go to Moscow, and then I didn't. Mm-hmm. And I felt for all those athletes who didn't get to perform and right. compete at the highest right. level. But life did go on. Right. And it was... I believe the right move to make politically at that point. Correct. But that wasn't virus. That wasn't about virus. Right. That was about politics. Oh, politics, right? Right. And so, yes, Skip. I don't really think the NBA had any other choice. Yeah. They had no other choice. They were taking the precautions yep. that was needed. Yeah. You know, like I said, they they had. So, not only does the NCAA have a hard decision to make here, not and hard by our standard, but they better make it quickly. And now the NHL's got to make a decision, and, and Major League Baseball yep. and soccer. They're all going to have to make some choices. Make- I'm supposed to leave for the XFL tomorrow, so I'd like know. to know That's what the another plan choice. Is. Yeah. Thank you for bringing that one I, up. We, have, we don't have an announcement. Yeah. Okay, and speaking of choices, the last thing I saw at the end of the last basketball game I'm going to see for a while was at the end of the Mavericks game. Right. And I was stunned, if you could see this, at what happened given oh. the climate we live in. No, don't do that. No, you can't do that. Oh. You, you can't hug sweaty bodies yeah. against each other, and everybody was doing it. Luca was just hugging everybody. Well, see, well, see, okay. under, under that skip, okay. well, you should have just went ahead and canceled the season. Yeah. Because even if you don't play in front of crowds, guess what happens? Look, Guys are going to still sweat, run up and down the court. They're going to sweat, and as the doctors will tell you, any, like, face-to-face, right. close, it's the worst thing you could do right. under our circumstances that, as you say, are escalating. Right. And I'm saying... 
I'm, I'm watching with Ernestine. We're both screaming at the TV. Stop it! Right. What are you thinking? I, I don't, Skip. I don't. I don't think. I, I don't know how many players at the time knew that the season had been suspended. I think it, they knew. And even Mark they, Cuban said that he was pretty sure all of his players knew. But mm -hmm. how many of them knew that an NBA player had contracted? Don't at that point. Don't because, know. Because, again, Skip, okay, yeah, you say not contact, but he ain't got it, I ain't got it, so we good. It ain't going to happen because we say, don't know anybody. In the end, you are not bulletproof. No. You might think you are, but you're not. Nope. It's a reminder, we got to take care of ourselves. Yes. We need to be cautious, and we will continue to monitor this if other leagues follow suit. But and I think we you will used... continue to wash our hands. Exactly. Uh, but you said yeah. it's sobering because sports are the outlet it's, for all of us. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. we, you know, I can't be quarantined our... with you. No sports, I can't be quarantined, can't be quarantined with you because you don't want to watch anything I like to watch. We're going to do our best to provide. Maybe... I will never be quarantined <laughs> with you for any reason. Thank you. Even if I try to quarantine, yeah. it's not going to happen. No. Uh, no. Well, as we all know by now, Tom Brady is set to hit NFL free agency for the first time in his 20-year career. And outside of the Patriots, one of the most talked about destinations for Brady has been the Titans. But the NFL Network reports that Tennessee is more focused on re-signing Ryan Tannehill to a long-term deal before free agency starts. Tannehill led the Titans to playoff road wins over the Patriots and Ravens before falling to the Chiefs in the AFC Championship. So Shannon, would you rather have Tannehill or Tom Brady? Tannehill. At this point of their careers, Tannehill is a better quarterback. Um, people cannot evaluate Tom Brady without going back. I'm evaluating 2019. Mm -hmm. I'm evaluating 2019, and I'm projecting moving forward. Uh, if you look at Ryan Tannehill, he was number one in yards per attempt, eighth in QBR, third in completion percentage. He has the fourth highest yards per attempt since the merger. The merger goes back to 1970. So he played extremely well when he came in for Marcus Mariota. And, Skip, at the end of the day, you got to look at what the guy – you're rejecting what the guy's going to be moving forward, not what he's done in the past. Mm. because there's no question if you base it on the past, Tom Brady is, is, has been exemplary. Mm. But last year, take Brady off the back of the jersey and understand that he was 27th in completion percentage, 27th in yards per attempt, 19th in QBR, and nobody's saying, oh, yeah, that, that's the guy I want to build. I want to take me to where I need to be. Mm. We make all these excuses. Somebody, every year since they've thrown the forward pass, Jenny, has led the league, their receiver, has led the league in drops. Never have I heard so much about drops until it happened to on Tom Brady's watch. Yeah. Mm. Guys, every year lead, lead the league and drop. Mm. But now, you see, that's why Tom's completion percentage was so bad. Mm. What about the other guys that t uh, uh, receivers led the league and drop? We didn't mention his completion percentage being bad. Mm. We just said he didn't get it done. So for me, I'm taking Ryan Tannehill. Uh, I understand that look, what Tom Brady's been able to accomplish, but I'm basing it on 2019 and moving forward. Mm. With that being said, I'm taking Ryan Tannehill, and the Tennessee Titans are very smart. Because, Skip, I cannot hope and wish, well, maybe Tom maybe Tom likes us, and then I let Ryan Tannehill hit the free agent market. He goes somewhere else. Brady goes to wherever he goes, and now what do I do? Marcus Mariota's gone. We already found out that we can't win with him, at least go far in the playoff. You win a few games, but nothing serious where we... People take us serious as a contender. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's Ryan Tannehill. This is the single most absurd question we've <laughs> asked in the history of this show. I disagree. If we had asked this question three or four months ago, or at least right before the past NFL season started, <laughs> the, the, our, our audience would laugh us yeah. off this set. Would, the laughter would show. be so loud, it would come <laughs> through the cameras here <laughs> and blow us off our chairs. I'm with you. Ryan Tannehill, we're, we're asking, would you take Ryan Tannehill over Tom Brady? And the Brady hater across from me is saying, absolutely, I would. I would. Okay, just for the record, you can go back and look at what I said about Ryan Tannehill before he got drafted. No, no, no. Miami said yes, and Miami will forever regret it because they kept saying yes, yes, mm -hmm. no, we're out. That's how he wound up in Tennessee. And I will give you this. He was ranked at the end of the regular season number one among quarterbacks by pro football focus. That was mostly because he led the league in yards per attempt. Mm. But if you look harder, if you look harder, his air distance was 29th 
and his catchable passes were 28. Those are both no good, no good. Okay. Furthermore, if you look a little deeper, he was surrounded by, you could argue, the best collection of weapons in the National Football League, which lifted his game <laughs> along with <laughs> as they lifted theirs. Who led this league in rushing, sir? It was Derrick Henry who happened to be the guy that Ryan Tannehill got to hand off to again and again and again and again. And if you look over the last one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, last eleven games, he literally ran over the whole league. Mm -hmm. He was getting close to being untackleable mm -hmm. until mm -hmm. he hit the brick wall that was the new Kansas City Chiefs defense yep. in the AFC Championship game. That had a lot to do with Mahomes just going crazy on the Tennessee defense. And by the second half, they just couldn't hand it to him anymore. And he got held to 69 yards on 19 carries. But if you go back starting in week 10 to Derrick Henry, 188, 159, 149, 103, 211. And then it goes 182 in the playoffs, 195 before Kansas City. It was extraordinary what he was doing. And you certainly agreed with that. Meanwhile, his receivers during the regular season ranked second in the NFL. Pro Football Focus was actually being pretty positive with the Patriot receivers. They ranked 23rd, so second versus 23rd. But the Patriots receivers were dead last in what's called separation, getting loose from okay. the DBs. Mm -hmm. Dead last, and especially their tight ends were ranked dead last in productivity after in the wake of, obviously, a Gronk, who was one of the all-time greatest right. threats at the tight end position that you know very well. But if we look at the receivers Ryan Tannehill got to throw to, A.J. Brown came out of nowhere as a kid out of Mississippi, mm -hmm. and, boy, D.K. Metcalf and him at Ole Miss, that was pretty, pretty special, good, right? Pretty good okay. combo. So he led them in receiving, and Corey Davis is still a stud, and that little Adam Humphreys, uh, he he was better last year than Julian Edelman was, the beat-up, broken-down no, shell of himself Don't that do Julian that. was, who did lead the league in drops. And then we got Jonu Smith, and we got Tajay Sharp. I love that last name, Sharp. <laughs> Chip <laughs> off the old block. Never, never, never. <laughs> and then that little Khalif Raymond from Holy Cross, he was the one who broke the Baltimore game open yep. with a deep ball. Mm -hmm. And then there was still Deion Lewis, and there was still Delaney Walker, and we're just talking weapons, weapons, more weapons all around Ron. Ryan Tannehill, who, by the way, once he hit the postseason, he started to look more and more like the old Ryan no, Tannehill. No, he did. Yes, they, he did. Because they took the ball out of his hand. Okay, well, why would they do that? Well, they had Derrick Henry. Right. So, first playoff game at New England, he goes 8 of 15 for 72. That's Jimmy G-esque, right? That's how Jimmy G was operating the playoffs. Second game... Uh, at Baltimore is 7 of 14 for 88 yards. You love that? You're taking that over Tom Brady? Stop it. You're, you're talking about a Tom Brady who even last year had his team impossibly in position to win the two seed in the AFC. Impossibly. With yet another fourth quarter, what should have been game-winning drive, against the Dolphins in the final regular so, season. So that, hey. that's, is that how we measure Tom Brady now? Well, I'll, I'll by say, being in position? Yeah. I thought it was my championship. Yeah. You so want to talk about he had the highest degree of difficulty in the league because he had the worst weapons, the worst protection collectively of any quarterback, and he did almost that? Well, Skip, I would give you he had the highest degree of difficulty. Had Coach Belichick no longer be there, been there, had he not had the number one scoring defense by a wide margin, mm -hmm. had he not had Dante Skarnecchia. Mm -hmm. If he, all three of those are removed, yep. I say, you know what, Skip Bayless, you're absolutely right right. Mm. But see, the problem that I have is that when he had Gronk and he had guys like Randy Moss and Wes Welker, mm -hmm. they never got the credit, the full credit that they deserved because it was always Tom and Tom's greatness. Mm. Tom can do this with anybody. When Corey Dillon was rushing for 15, 15 yards and they won Super Bowl, y'all didn't talk about the running game. It was Tom, Tom, Tom. Mm. Now, mm. it's time to pay. Oh, boy. You get, well, hell, if you give everybody Julio Jones, on one side, Mike Thomas on the other. Give him Travis Kelsey. Nobody give him said that. Give, yeah, you, you want nobody, all that. Nobody has that. Because you make an excuse for why Rand Tiny Hill was better than he was. He had Derrick Henry. He got A.J. Brown. He got Corey Davis. He got John New Smith. Second best group of receivers, <laughs> says Pro Football Focus, in the whole NFL. Okay, what did wow. Pro Football Focus say about that quarterback? Mm. Number one quarterback in the whole football league. Mm. Jenny, you Until remember? the real game the, 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 Oh, okay. yeah. he won two playoff games. Mm. Do you remember, Jenny? I think Fire. it was like the first three weeks of the season. Yeah. Who did pro football focus have as the number one ranked quarterback in the NFL that Skip hung his hat on? Mm. Huh. It was Tom Brady. And who okay. did he have for a brief moment? 
this guy named Antonio Brown. You remember that? Hold on. That was for the first what three weeks. He had Tom. He had Antonio Brown for one week. Mm -hmm. So the week before and the week after, yep. he was still number one. Huh. So Shannon Sharp says he just hit the wall and went straight <laughs> over the cliff, and he is used uh, up I, and done. I said mm. he's not the same guy, and you know it, Skip. Mm. It's okay. Did you see any loss of velocity from Tom Brady last year? I saw none. What Rob Ryan said, he's flinching in the pocket. Mm. Now, that's what Rob said. But he also said he's still moving and grooving in the pocket, he just can, like always. Yeah. What we Rob saw. Ryan said he would jump at the chance to take him on the open he market. He said he's right? a winner. Yeah. He makes everyone yeah. around him. Yeah. Yeah. He had a lot of good to say. Winner. That, that's that short for saying he's not athletic. He, 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 he ain't uh, the same guy. When uh, they just say, oh, he's a winner. Mm, I don't think in that sense he meant it that way. He's a winner. So next year in Tennessee, if you had a choice, Brady or Tannehill, Tannehill, you know, Tannehill would win more games and go deeper in the playoffs with this same roster and Tom Brady. Because what do we see, Skip? What about all the quarter, quarterbacks that went deep in the playoffs? Mm. Most of them that's in the, that made the playoff, they can move. Mm. Only a handful of them couldn't move. Mm. That's the evolution of it, Skip. Really? It evolved in one year? Because no, I didn't. the previous year, that guy who couldn't move won the whole thing. No, oh, whoa, 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 yeah. whoa. Thanks, all. thanks for an outstanding defense. Because, yeah. hold up, you can still win a game in the NFL if you don't throw a touchdown and a throw mm. a pick? And have a 36 QBR? What did you do that Wait at, Jimmy? Wait a second. Against, two years ago against the Chargers, you loved and picked a win at Foxborough. He threw See? for 343. Yeah. That works. Whoa. And then in overtime at Kansas City, he goes, completion on third and 10, completion, completion. He converted three straight third and 10s and scored a touchdown. Huh. Way to go. You heard what he said? Which he part? did this against San he did this against the Chargers. Yeah. He did this against Kansas City. Mm -hmm. He ain't mentioned who he did it with. Mm. That was Edelman. Mm. That was that. That was James White. He had Gronk. That was Burkhead. He had Gronk. Oh, mm. what? Hogan. Mm. Hey, what? Come on. Mm. That's he, when he does it, when things go well, Tom is unbelievable. Let him lose a game. Man, Shannon, Julian Edelman is terrible. Shannon Sharp has had little to no respect over time for Julian Edelman, Chris Hogan, or Danny Amendola. No, 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 no. Little no, to no, know. No, no, little no, 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 no. I'm not going to let you do that, Skip Bay. Come on. No. Really? Seriously? No, I said he's not a Hall of Famer. Mm. I said, but because, just because they're not Julio Jones mm. doesn't mean they're not good. Mm. In that system, mm. for what they ask them to do, mm. they're phenomenal. Mm. That's what I've tried to tell people. Was Chris Hogan drafted? No. Was, yeah. Wait a second. Was Danny Amendola drafted? No. Was Julian Edelman drafted? Yes, in the seventh round. Because yeah. he was a quarterback at Kent State. Yeah, there's a lot of people that John Randall was undrafted. Okay. He was on the all-centennial team. He's in the Hall of Fame. Shannon Sharp went in the seventh round. Mm -hmm. He's a Hall of Famer. Yep. So you, well, I just gave you three. I gave you two. And he made all three of them household names. Mm -hmm. Tom Brady did. Okay, well, continue. Well, so why didn't he make uh, 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 Nikhil Harry? Why didn't he make... Because Nikhil uh, Harry missed the first eight games and never looked okay. right. What about me. Philip Dorsett? Mm. He did the best he could over <laughs> the time. He the best he could. Well, he could. Skip. Did Indy give up on Philip Dorsett, who was a first-round pick? Did they gladly give him to Bill Skip, Belichick? Skip, yep. Skip, let me tell you how these things work. <laughs> I don't care how bad a player is. He has a level of talent because you don't get to this level without having that. Mm. Now, everybody's talent is not equal. Mm. But you don't have to be Julio or Mike Thomas or one of these elite mm -hmm. receivers to carve out a niche and play really well. And that's what Tom has done. Tom has taken – nobody does more with less. My only problem is, is that when people evaluate Tom, they never evaluate the players that he's playing with fairly. Mm -hmm. They don't give him the credit mm -hmm. until it goes bad. Mm -hmm. And it's never Tom's fault. Mm -hmm. He's the only quarterback to get that. Mm -hmm. What is Shannon Sharp's favorite word on this show? Oh <laughs> Expect. <laughs> Yes. yes. Were there any expectations on Ryan Tannehill as the season opened last year? No. Zero. No. He had failed in Miami, and everybody's like, really? You're going right. to give him a shot? And then that started happening, and then that started. And then all of a sudden, very quietly out of nowhere, came Tennessee. No expectations. If you give him his money and you say, you're our face of the yeah. franchise going forward, good luck yeah. to the Tennessee Titans because he will revert to being Ryan Tate. Good luck playing a 43-year-old playing in a new system at another location. Good luck. Okay, but is it a whole new system? Because that coach used to play in the Belichick right. system, right? You remember the movie Ransom? Mm -hmm. When the guy went, uh, uh, the guy's character, what? Liam Neeson's, his character. Mm -hmm. And he said he's going to hunt him down. Yep. At the end of the, at the end of that you conversation. Mean, are you talking about Taken? You mean Taken, 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 Taken. Taken. Okay. taken. Yep. You remember what he said? when he says, I'm going to hunt you down? Uh -huh. yes, and the guy is. says, good luck. Good luck. And hang the phone up on him. It gives yeah. me chills. Good luck. 
and he recorded that conversation, <laughs> and he used it to identify that guy, yes. and that guy bit the dust. And, and guess what? Ryan Tannehill is yep. using your conversation, yep. to, and you go bite the dust. He's okay. recording Skip right now. Yeah, he's recording. He's listening. Uh -huh. He's watching. Hey, Ryan, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. No mercy. Let's go back to the NBA and something else that did happen last night. Vince Carter has already announced that he will retire after this season, ending a career that has spanned four decades. Eight teams, eight all-star selections, and an iconic slam dunk contest performance. And his final NBA game could possibly have been last night. League announced a suspension of the season during the Hawks game against the Knicks, and Vince was subbed in during the final moments, nailing a three-pointer for what could be his final points. It's emotional. Yes. Yeah. Play back, uh, Shannon. If that was Vince Carter's final shot, how will you remember him? Skip. I, 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 this is Vince Carter moment, but you. See, I know. They were down by twenty, and I straight got hot. Oh. He started melting that thing away in the fourth quarter. Take hit the it away. <laughs> oh, I straight. Who won the game? I don't do that, Skip. The Knicks. That's <laughs> what he's doing right now. The Knicks. Shannon, that was and not you're the question. Gloating about that. Oh. Oh, I straight, I straight got hot. Wait, yo. you mean my straight? No, no, no. I thought you were shivering over Vince Carter, but okay. The first thing come to mind, Skip. I did too. Right? <laughs> the first thing, obviously, is the dunk contest. Yeah. Um, it was uh, one of the greatest performances yep. um, that we had ever seen mm -hmm. uh, in a dunk contest. 2000. Um, yep. Dunking over in the Olympics, dunking <laughs> over seven foot Frederick Weiss mm -hmm. of France. Yep. He, he was phenomenal. He's one of the great dunkers in NBA history. He is. Skip. But also, when I think back and I look at Vince, did he get everything out of his out of his ability? Because a guy that's so athletic, playing 22 years, he should have been more than a two-time All-NBA player. And I understand that Kobe was there and T-Mac, and there were some other yeah. great players, and he played in the era because he intersected. I mean, he caught uh, uh, Jordan at the tail end. He got Brady. He got a Brady. He got uh, Kobe at yep. the beginning. Mm -hmm. He got LeBron. So, I mean, he's, he's seen the test of time. Mm -hmm. He got Duncan. He got Shaq. Skip Garnett, Duncan, he played with some, but Skip, when you look at his ability, um, and look at, because I, I, I went back and I looked at some old footage of uh, 2001 Eastern Conference semifinals, when he and Allen Iverson are going back and forth. One game, he go for 50, Iverson come back and go for 52. He get 30 in Iverson, so it was going back and forth. And, and I'm like, never finished top five in the MVP. The highest he ever got was 10th. He was rookie of the year. And I'm like, he was, yep. Mm -hmm. did, did he leave something? Did, did, did Vince empty the tank? Because it's hard for me to see, to, to believe, Skip, somebody with that kind of ability yep. that can leap like he can, the athleticism, mm -hmm. nice shot. You, Skip, a guy with that kind of ability, you're not supposed to go to eight teams. Hmm. He did. Yeah. I wonder if he and T-Mac could have stayed together in Toronto. Could, yep. it, could they have done something really, really special? Mm -hmm. I don't know, but Skip, I, I mean, he had an unbelievable career to play that long, the longevity that this man had. Um, but I, I, sometimes I find myself thinking, did Vince Carter give me everything that I deserve to see from him? Okay. I do not disagree with your premise. And to your point, he made eight all-star teams, but the last one was in 2007. Yeah. So he played 13 more seasons after his last all-star team. Mm -hmm. And if you want to know the truth truth about this, he lasted 22 years. Think about that. Absolutely. Remember, he's almost seven months older than Tom Brady. Put that in perspective. Mm -hmm. That's to play a more athletic game of basketball yeah. and last 22 years yeah. while being 43 years of old yeah. age, hey. and still looking pretty good. He, yeah, pretty he's, good. He's still, he still can get up, Skip. Yeah, he can yeah. still get up. The reason he lasted 13 more years after making his last All-Star team is what I will remember him as. Really a good guy and a great teammate yep. and a great mentor yep. for Trey Young or whoever, yep. whatever young player yep. was on the team. Because wasn't he, in, wasn't he in Dallas last year? Oh, two years ago. That was two, might be two years yeah. ago. Well, he was in Dallas for uh, but three, that was before, three before years. That, but that was before Luka. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, did he mention no, Luka, no, but that was no. before Luka. But wherever at Memphis, Memphis. everybody missed job. But, but yeah. again, he was, he was just always a really sure. positive influence yes. on every team. And he's one of the most liked guys in the whole he, league. He is. He is. So all of a sudden, the dunk... For, for some of our younger fans, that they don't even know the dunk contest. <laughs> and again, he was a great leaper. He could really sky, but he wasn't a ferocious dunker like Dominic, yeah. where he just like tear the rim down. Yeah. I, I don't remember that. 
But but he would occasionally, even though, remember his playoff record, he only got to one conference finals. Right. That was Orlando 2010 versus Celtics, and they lost in six. Right. Okay? He was 38 and 50 in the playoffs. Well, 38 is pretty good to win right. 38 playoff games, but you lost 50. Right. But the one I will remember, the one that will forever stick in my craw, came against my Spurs, and it was actually game three in 2014 when they went on to beat LeBron and, mm-hmm. and D. Wade in the finals. But it was one-to-one going into Dallas for game three. And I don't know if we have this. I think we might. It's the end of game three. Right. And this is the second greatest clutch shot I've ever seen. Oh, yeah, I remember this. See this? Remember this? Yeah. The inbound pass goes to him, and Ginobili is all over him, and he has to pump fake him up off his feet and hold on and shoot it off one foot in the corner from the deepest corner, and he ripped it as clean at the buzzer as you can rip it to win by one point. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, my Spurs were down two games to one with game four in Dallas. Right. And I thought they were in huge trouble, and it took seven games to eliminate Vince's Dallas Mavericks with Dirk, obviously. Right. But but you want to talk about a clutch? That was the second greatest clutch shot I've seen to the Ray Allen shot that shot me right in the heart, <laughs> game six greatest. of 2013. Right. Sure. And I felt like that afternoon, I was in our apartment in New York City, I fell on the floor on that one because I couldn't believe he had done that because right. I was convinced it was over and that we would get the last stop. And with Ginobili on him, who's a very good and savvy crafty and, and defender, crafty yeah. defender, he faked him off his feet and still had enough poise to wait and set off one foot and just rip it clean from the corner at the buzzer. Yep. It was a great clutch shot, and he was highly capable of doing that. Right. But we never got to see it in the finals. And, and the skip, he still had athleticism, but basically he had turned himself. He was a journeyman because, as you mentioned, the last All-Star game was 13 years ago, yep. and he kind of bounced around. But he, had, he was more of a three-point specialist. He was. He did more shooting of, was, you know, just spotting up shooting threes. Yeah. He's very good at it. So Carolina, you're a big Carolina yeah, fan. Yeah, I am. And he got to his last two years. He was he's left after his junior years. He year. stayed three years. Yeah. And they got to two final he fours and, Jameson. and lost in the semifinal yeah. both times. Yep. So uh, they lost to Arizona and, and then Utah. to Utah. It, it, it's, it's a very good career. Right. I don't know if it's a great career. Right. If he were in the NFL where it's, the standards are much stricter to get in the Hall of Fame, You'd say kind of borderline Hall of right. Fame, right? Yeah, no but, rings. But, but see, the sca- thing is with the Hall of the Pro Football Hall of Fame, yep. Skip, they don't take anything into consideration but your NFL career. Basketball, they take college, they take you they play do. the Olympics. Yeah. So you take all that. So when you look at, he went to two Final Fours. He has a gold. He has a gold medal. I know. Everybody gets in. I always tell you, I I think I'm in the Basketball Hall of Fame, but I'm not sure because everybody got in. But 22 yeah. years. That's that. I mean, yeah. there's not a whole lot no. of guys. But what? I think Parrish, only Robert Parrish has more games. Yeah. It's it's highly impressive. Yeah. That's very impressive. But in the end, I'm just going to remember, he was a really good guy. He, really know? good guy, great yeah. dunker, some yeah. of the great in-game dunks. Yep. He got uh, Alonzo Mourning. Mm-hmm. Oh, he got a lot of guys. <laughs> he, he, did, totally. he did, he did, he yeah. did. Yeah. The and he shot was last night was special. It was, you know what it was? Yeah. It was very cool. Trey just handed it cool. off to him, and he had to do it on right. cue. As the it's five four three two right. one and and he made it and that's yeah. a good way to go out and I assume he's going to go out. Yeah. That way. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, unless they unless they play, yeah. you know, they say they're going to they suspend the uh, what they suspended the season. They didn't yeah. say this they canceled season. it. They suspended it. Going to see. And you know what, Skip? That was Ice Trey eleventh assist. Was it really? Forty two and eleven. Oh, was wow. counting. Huh? Apparently, Shannon. Did, did you see the turnover that that broke the game open where he just threw I it right to the Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He and tried to play the John Collins. The guy took it right out there. I saw that. And then that. it's like little tiny Trey was thinking, can, "Can I stop this dunk? No, I'll just get out of the way." Well, he right? tried. He tried, but. Uh, he ended up getting a foul. Uh, he, he turned it over and got a foul and won. So I'm not going to mention that Trey Young leads the NBA in turnovers, but that doesn't. That's neither here nor there, as you always say. Note. Neither but, here nor but there. Skip, just they, sweep it right under skip, your little carpet. Skip, over they there. weren't even supposed to be in that game. Uh, really? But I Trey say, you know what? If this going to be, if I'm going to go down, I'm going down swinging. And he just started banging them things from, like, logo. They lost at home to the Knicks. Okay. Really? To the Knicks? Hold on. Are, then, are I, they, then I saw a video yesterday that Trey Young is talking about. I want to nutmeg LeBron. Really? Yeah. He's feeling you, confident. Hey, hey that's, hey, that's he. That's he. That's he. That now nah, nah, you about to get punched in your throat. That's Trey you're making him have a big head. Oh, Trey. Yeah. Oh, Trey. Yeah. That's what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. I thought this was a Vince Carter debate. And then he tied the game up. Yeah. Talking about ice. He, he got started cooking for the logo. 
Can I move on, Skip? Is that you're, you're like all those Atlanta fans. That's all you got. <laughs> that's your side show. Yeah, that's all we got. But I just, I, I'll let you have that. Don't pretend like KD hmm? advanced to the your conference finals in his first two years. Don't do that. Don't act like Jordan didn't have a losing record his first two years, Skip. Don't do that now. Hmm. Steph Curry, y'all make it seem like these guys, y'all are so hard on these guys now when some of the all-time greats. How did how did how did Westbrook and KD were able to be in the spot to get James Harden? Mm. Huh. Them two guys on the same team. When KD was at Texas, I predicted on a show called Cold Pizza that he would lead this league in scoring multiple times, and I'm pretty sure that's Did you happened. predict he'll be 20 mm. and 23? His first two years when 20 game one year, 23 the next. Did you predict that? Mm. Well, look at that. Look at that ice tray, a little chance. Yeah. Give somebody. Well, I do remember in 2012, he, he just carried them right to the finals, right? Uh, hey, what happened? Baby Thunder. Hey, yeah, well, no, there's no Baby Thunder. Baby Thunder. thunder. You see, <laughs> hey, Jenny, you see what he tried to do there? That's he's funny. A, he put the Baby Thunder <laughs> because then that diminishes what old goat James did to it. Is that what it is? That's what he Now you brought in the goat into the conversation? It was mostly goat what James? D. Wade did to him. Oh, Skip, yes. you ought to be ashamed yes. of yourself. Mostly it was that. We've taken a different turn. Oh, so I guess you dug So it wasn't Mike Miller and Shane Battier raining threes all over. They, the they rained. Yeah. Who was the finals MVP? Mm. I forget. You have to get No mercy. ESPN ranked the NFL's best unrestricted free agents, and Dak Prescott was ranked first ahead of Tom Brady yeah. at number two. When explaining Dak's value, the list said, quote, if a 27-year-old quarterback coming off a 4,902-yard season ever reached the open market, he would be swarmed. So, Shannon, do you agree with the rankings? I like the word swarmed. I do, 100%. This is unprecedented. We've never, I can't recall. Can you recall in your years of covering? Because I can't recall in my years, and I go back, Started playing in 1990 in the NFL and been covering, playing and covering it since. A 27-year-old quarterback that's one that won Rookie of the Year, won the division twice, mm. was allowed to reach the end of his contract. I can't recall that, mm. but this is what the Cowboys have allowed. Mm. He's a 27 years old, mm. and you want me to, based on what I saw last year and moving forward. Mm -hmm. Take a 43-year-old over him? Mm. When? I love what, so unless Mahomes or somebody else, Russell Wilson, was available, Dak Prescott is absolutely, because Skip Bayless tells me all the time, the quarterback position is the hardest position to play. It's the most valuable position in all the sport. And of the quarterbacks that's available, mm. nobody played it better than one ring, Dakota mm. Prescott. <laughs> I love when you use this full yeah. name. That's what happened. Reign, R-E-I-G-N. Yeah. Right. So As it, in, he will reign. And he reigns supreme over the free agent market. Uh -huh. Okay. So that being said, Skip Bayless is a no-brainer. I mean, I mean, he's not even close. Tom Brady isn't close to Dak in completion percentage, yard for attempt. Dak had more touchdown passes. Stop this. Stop it. Dak is number one, and rightfully so. He sits atop the free agent board as well as he should. Mm. So this topic amuses me almost as much as it astounds and staggers me. My man, Shannon Sharp, across the table, is backed so deep into a corner on this topic <laughs> that the problem is that the, the fact that you cannot stand Tom Brady is now somehow outweighing the fact that you have never believed in Dak Prescott. So I had to sit here for an entire football season and hear you just beat him down and beat him up and beat him up. And what about the A I gave him, the A-plus I gave him in Detroit? You don't want so, to talk about that. So I will talk about that because the one game where I'm on the edge of my seat thinking they're still going to blow it to Jeff Driscoll of all backups, stand-in <laughs> quarterbacks, you gave my quarterback an A-plus for, for a game in which he played okay. Don't do that. My team played less than okay and barely beat the Detroit Lions, albeit at Detroit. Mm -hmm. But the starter was Jeff Driscoll. So Dak gets an A-plus for outplaying Jeff Driscoll when he got F after F after F after F. Even for wins, he got Fs because all I heard from you about the whole year was your favorite phrase, empty calories. Correct? Uh-huh. Empty calories. Mm -hmm. I kept saying, 
he's he's on a historical pace to throw for X Y Z yards. Empty calories said yep. Shannon Sharp. Nobody threw for more yards in a fourth quarter than Dak did in the fourth quarter at Chicago. Empty calories said Shannon Sharp, the right. Hall of Famer. Yes. Nobody threw for more yards in a second half this year than Dak did against Aaron Rodgers and the Packers at home, a game, albeit that they finally failed to win. They, they couldn't quite what get home. Finally? They finally failed. He almost brought them no, all the way didn't. back. Yes, he did. They were within an onside kick of getting back in the game until my kicker, who's probably no longer going to be my kicker, <laughs> Brett the Fret Maher, missed a chip shot field goal that would have set up an onside at the end of the game to get right back in the I middle of the game. I think they got rid of Brett the Fret at some point yeah. during the season. I think yeah. y'all got a new kicker. Well, now. I'm saying I don't think they're going to bring him back. Oh, so. no. Oh, yeah. Okay. It. So the point is that my team went eight and eight, and my quarterback did throw for a whole lot of yards and have some really good games, but he missed some throws. Yeah. Here or there, he missed yeah. some key throws. And I've always argued he's a playmaker, he's a gamer, he's that guy who makes that play for this team, my team. And last year, he didn't make enough of those plays, which is why they went eight and eight. And you pounded me on the head with eight and eight right. all the way for, for, for a month after the season. Every time the Cowboys came up, eight and eight, went, eight and eight. He went eight and eight. Okay. Yeah, so I, I'm now even reading stories about Cowboy message boards in which the fans are, are having all out war over the worth of that guy, number four, my quarterback, where about it, it's split down the middle. It's about 50 50, where huh. 50% of Cowboy fans, and I'm probably. Just, I'm just estimating, sure. I'm guessing, but it sounds like about 50% don't believe in him enough to, to sort of bet the ranch on him going forward hey, because they're just not sure what he is. It's pretty the big. ranch might be $40 million a year. Okay, that's yeah. it. Lower than it would Turner or yeah. Anchorage's ranch. And, you know, we good. It'll be a small ranch. We good. Okay, so I love my quarterback. Do I love him at the t to the tune of $40 million a year? And remember, I'm going to remind you, Jerry Jones has the fifth most cap money to spend of any NFL owner, yet he hasn't leaped to a conclusion Thank with you. that guy. And, what does that tell you? And guess who else knows that? If you know that, guess who else knows that? Todd France and one Dak Prescott, okay. and they ain't happy. Okay, so Jerry Jones is telling you, I'm not all the way in here. Well, how about I'm not into that level. Tom, Tom right? Francis, I tell you what, don't put the tag on me. Yeah. And we'll see. Well, Let's see what I can get. We're heading toward the tag. Now, why you want to, Jenny, if you not, first of all, why would you put something on layaway you don't want? Yeah. Thank you. If you don't believe Thank me. Thank you. So let it go. Thank you. Make my case. Th no, no. Unmake your case. No, no, skip. So you put Dak, let him go. Let him walk onto yes. the market. And there'll be four or five teams that need a quarterback thinking, really? I don't know. Are we, are we sure about that guy? Yes. Are we sure? It's the same four or five team uh -huh. that are looking at Tom Brady and it's like, hmm, are we sure? We could have Tom Brady? Skip. Skip. This is, look, Tom freaking Skip. Brady Skip. is on the market? Skip. It'll be like Michael Jordan being on the market. Stop it. No, it's not. <laughs> anyway, it'll be like, hmm, no. Yeah. yeah. Skip, when you look at a free agent, obviously, there's something that attracted you to the free agent, what he's done in the past. But... What's more, what weighs more heavily in the decision to sign a free agent, mm -hmm. what can he do for me in the future? And I believe that Rain Dakota future is brighter than Tom Brady. Now he's Rain Dakota. Yeah, yeah, if we get yeah, During the year, he was R-A-I-N <laughs> Dakota because you're just, you're just raining on his parade. Right now. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, he rained. Yeah. yeah, he rained supreme. Skip, you need to stop this now. Now, you... Because now you want to devalue the guy. See, all year long you get him A's Look, and bleed. Now you try to devalue the guy so not, Jerry don't have to pay him. You're, you're putting him in the same sentence with the greatest quarterback ever, the GOAT, who still looks to me eye testing, no loss of velocity, healthy as he ever was. So what, Didn't miss a game? Seriously? Did Dak miss you, a game? Who's got the more the greater wealth of knowledge in that brain of his? I always rave about Dak's intangibles. He is a great young leader of but, a football team. Wait a second. Tom Brady is the simply the greatest leader ever that this league has ever seen. And I'll put him right. It's Ray Lewis, Shannon Sharp, somewhere in that discussion. But, but Tom has shown you over time, over 20 years, to be the greatest leader ever. Look, I'm not trying to deny that Tom Brady's knowledge and his ability to recall information but what happens is, Skip, as we start to age, the ability to recall it with the same level of quickness. Oh, so now you're saying he's losing some memory? Oh, no. <laughs> He's suffering from 
old person's disease? <laughs> you know that, you, you is that, that what we're saying? I hope not. That's not what I, I, don't I said. Think we're there yet with I said his ability to recall information with the same quickness. Oh, stop it. I, I hope don't he's think he watching right that. now. Yeah, he wouldn't oh, appreciate Oh, he would that. not yeah, that's, appreciate that. Look, all I'm saying is, Skip Bayless, it, look. See, what you try to do, you try to compare him. I'm saying, starting 2020 and moving forward, Dak Prescott's future is brighter than Tom Brady's. Mm -hmm. Tom Brady's past outshines everybody. Hey, I'll give you this. Three years from now, Dak will be a far more valuable free agent than Tom Brady because Tom will be retired. That's what's going to happen. He's that got two good years left. Rain is a better free agent right now. And, and here's what you keep overlooking. Did you see what Robbie Anderson said yesterday? The Jets receiver is yeah. going to be a free agent. He says he dream, literally has had dreams of being on the practice field catching passes from Tom Brady. You don't think that that number 12 would be a free agent magnet wherever he goes? What does Antonio Brown says? In Tom, I trust. Wherever Tom goes, A.B. wants to go. Now, will well, he, he was there. Get... He effed that up. Yeah, well, okay. So when you were here, Tom, why'd you eff it up, A.B.? Well, he didn't eff it up on the field at Miami. You remember that game? But, it, that one a, game lot, you know? but, but a lot of times, Skip, it's not always on the field in mm. which someone messes it up. But that being said, I want to know one thing, Skip. Let's just say, you think Rob Anderson taking a pay cut to play with Tom Brady? I don't know. Maybe he would. Okay, we'll it's see. It's his dream. Okay, it's dream. It's Antonio's dream to play a whole season with Tom Brady. I, Wherever you go, I'm going. That was, it was my dream to play with John Elway. That was my dream growing up at the It was team. not yeah, it your was. dream. It you all had worked no out, though. idea. It all I'm worked sorry. out for you guys. I'm calling baloney on that. <laughs> sorry. Not your my dream. dream. My dream was to play in the NFL. I didn't care who I played with. Look, <laughs> whoever... Whoever signs Tom Brady, Brady can just snap his fingers and assemble a super team around him. No, he can't. You want to come here? You want to come here? Because all of a sudden, whoa, there's, no, there's whoa. wait, 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 wait. There's no Bill Belichick who's riding, you know, overseeing the whole, the whole organization because he made it harder and harder on that guy until last year. That guy had nothing around him, no Jenny, supporting cast. Hold on, wait a minute. Yeah. What? When did Robbie Anderson become Julio Jones or Mike, uh, Mike Thomas? He smoked my team. It was that ain't like 97 that yards or whatever it was. Yeah. Remember that? Greg From War the mono victim? Remember Greg that? Greg Ward oh, Jr. Yeah. cooked your team. Mm. Greg Ward Jr. He's the guy that started out. Oh, I loved you. him. <laughs> loved him in college at Houston. Loved him. Oh, the quarterback. Yep. Oh, now you love him because he cooked your team. I did. We need to stop this notion. He cooked my team. Oh, they scored 17 points. And he, and he got a real, uh, 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 Greg Ward Jr. cooked him. Uh, yeah, but we talking about, Rob, did you hear what Robbie Anderson said? Now, had Julio said that, had Mike Thomas said that, had, you know, one of those big Mike Evans. Mm. Okay, now you're like, what? That was your dream. Robbie Anderson runs like 4-2 in pads. Seriously. He can fly. Skip. Robbie, Han Robbie Anderson has Hey, Tom would have taken him in New England last year. You have do, nobody let me ask you a question. How do you do against old bump and run Gilmo? Mm, who? Robbie Anderson. I don't know. You do, though. I can't remember. Yeah, All I know, I know is how Amari didn't do against him. So it's the same thing Robbie Anderson yeah. did. Old bump run did him, did him, did him up. Well, who didn't he D up? He D'd up the whole league. Oh, uh, Parker. Huh? Parker from uh, Miami. Okay. You remember that? Because you kept showing highlight. <laughs> Come on, Gilmore, get him. Well, it was pretty bad, right? <laughs> Look at you. Now like you don't feel third, no. third and seven, and Ryan Fitzpatrick's throwing to Devontae Parker. Stephon Gilmore time. should not only be a defensive player of the year, he should have been a, simple, a Super Bowl MVP. Okay. I'll yeah. give you that. And that has to do nothing with what we just talked about. But you talking about Brady's like 10 times more valuable than Dak on the open market. No, he's not. Half a Cowboy Nation is like, let him go on the open market. But see, there, and that half, 100% of that half is delusional that thinks y'all winning the Super Bowl every year. So I don't put no stock in what Cowboy fans say about players. No, no one half. One half, I do. one half knows that that quarterback is one and two in postseason games. And they also know that that quarterback has won six out of nine Super Bowls and should have won two more. Whoa, 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 whoa. What was he last year? He had the two seed in the palm of his hand, did everything he could have done to get the two okay. seed. Okay, hold on, Skip. He got into the playoffs. Mm. I need to know what he, when he got into the playoffs, what happened? His beat up, battered, aging football team needed the desperately the bye week, and it didn't, <laughs> it lost the bye week thanks to its coach's defense. Right, well, how about this here? The mastermind, mm. the greatest football coach in NFL history. Bill Walsh? With a minute and 30 to go, mm. Tom Brady take a knee. Mm. And Tom, I do not trust. Mm. And you said you had a problem because I remember we talked about it. You had a problem with that. 
Coach that, Belichick took the ball out of Tom Brady's hand. He's just a great coach. Which Belichick. is precisely why Tom Brady is about to become the most valuable free agent in NFL history. Not even close. History. Not even close. Michael Jordan has hit the market. Come one, come all. It's hurry, hurry, days. step right up to Tom Brady. <laughs> Stop. Stop. March 16th, yeah. the yeah. day Just that watch. teams can begin or, conversations. It's going to be madness, chaos. Brady mania. No, it's not. Yeah, you got Brady it. Brady mania. But I do think it's important to know that he wants the control. So it's not he necessarily does. the teams that just want Brady. Yep. They have to also allow him to have this control, yep. which yeah. is but a big I, but, change. But I, yeah, teams. exactly. Hold on. Wait a minute. You went to nine Super Bowls, had no control. Mm. You won six of those. So now we, you want to get control? Well, can I have? Can, can did, I bring Coach Belichick? He did have complete control of the offense. No, Coach you Belichick. Know it and Coach I know Belichick it. put all the. Coach Belichick had already told him. Mm. Put all these pieces in place. Yep. Okay, this is how it's gonna play out. Mm. Get that man his credit, Skip Bayless. You keep trying to undermine Coach Belichick. Why you do that? I can't wait until it's Brady versus Belichick. Woo! Race to the I Super. Mean, I want all the cases. Yeah. I want all to do. I want all to do. Yeah. That Pepsi has ever made. Uh-huh. I won't shove him in because I'm taking Coach Belichick. Okay. Well, Tom you're bringing Tom Brady's him about in. to close your cases. No, All no, of them. No, 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 no. I want a thousand cases of Pepsi. No. Okay, no, you got please it. please don't say Pepsi. Those things. You can't take I mean, I got to do. Unfortunately, mm. okay. Against Coach, against, you talking about Tom Brady against Coach Belichick? Oh, Man, you must be. Skip, do you realize Coach Belichick taught Tom everything he knows? Mm -hmm. You notice what I said, Jenny? He taught Tom everything he I knows, not everything mm. he knows. Okay. You know what I was asking, Bayless? As the villain, the villain in Taken said, good luck. Okay. Good right? Luck. Okay, your day coming. <laughs> really We're going to find out. Yeah. We're going to find Here out about, about uh, what, seven days? When, when is the... Uh... So four days now, because yep. it's March 16th. Oh, March 16th. Okay, yeah, yeah, we're going to find out. We're going to find out. Yep. We're going to find out. We're going to find out. Find out. Uh, no mercy. So the NBA announced that it is suspending this season for an undetermined amount of time after Utah's Rudy Gobert tested positive for coronavirus prior to the game between the Jazz and the Thunder last night. That game was postponed just moments before tip-off, and both teams were quarantined in the arena. There were four games being played when the league made its announcement, and all were completed. In addition, any team that faced the Jazz in the last 10 days must now of quarantine and we're joined by fox sports nba analyst chris broussard oh crazy last yes. couple hours uh chris so just your reaction to the news and how it all unfolded well first i was amazed at how quickly things were developing sure. it wasn't uh, every day something new was happening it was every hour and it got to the point where it's like every 10 or 15 minutes rob park and i were doing our radio wow. show Yesterday, when we started it at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 Eastern, like teams were still talking about playing with fans. Like Sacramento was going to play mm -hmm. their future games with fans mm -hmm. while Golden State wasn't. Right. And so there was that whole debate going on. And within a few hours, the season had been postponed. And the NBA has been, I've seen some people criticize them and say they should have gotten out in front of this yep. faster. I, I thought they've done, I think they've done a good job so, because yeah. it was what, about six days ago right. when it broke that they were talking about playing without fans. Yes. And at that point, a lot of people weren't really paying as much attention to the coronavirus as necessary. So it seemed like, wow, it, that seems like a, a big step. Right. But they were out in front of that. Um, but at the same time, I don't think they should be getting like the ultimate praise, as some have said, for for postponing the season. Because once Rudy Gobert got it or any player got it, it, it the decision was made like this. It was no longer Adam Silver's decision, mm -hmm. in my view, once a player had it. You had no choice. Correct. Wow. You had that was the whole point of not letting fans in to Correct. prevent a player or someone from getting it. Correct. So the choice had been made at that point. So after, you know, the news broke, I start, you know, texting and, and talking with people around the league. And they're kind of all over the place. You know, some teams have already told players last night, don't come in for the next couple of days. Just stay away. Then we'll find out what's going on. Get back to you. Some teams are having conference calls today with their players. Others are talking to the league. You know, they're, they're still kind of finding out what's right. going on. Um, but some, you know, so they're all kind of speculating some, I think this is overly optimistic, but some think they'll be out for two or three weeks and then resume playing. Um, others have said they what they think may happen, and again, this is speculation on people's parts, but what may happen is 
they're off for the next 30 days. And you end the regular season now. Like, however the standings are now, that's how the season ends. And then in 30 days, you start, you restart with the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Which, and the playoffs are supposed to start April 18th, which is roughly 30 days right, from right. now. Mm -hmm. And so that seems feasible if okay, things go remember, well. When dealing with coronavirus, this virus, totally. nobody knows. Nope. That's I, I, because I, of the unknown. I, I totally agree. I've seen many infectious disease doctors on television saying, we just have no idea. I, I, so I, I, totally I, I don't agree. even know how you can you can even try to speculate it could only be you, you can't. Well, I, Skip, to your point, I thought, and again, we don't know, but when I was hearing these things and seeing these things getting texted to me, I thought these were all, all overly optimistic. I don't know. I mean, I was surprised that guys, uh, people were kind of like, oh, you know, we'll be back for the playoffs. Like, Nobody, at least that I spoke with, seems to be panicking like the play. The, the rest of the season is in jeopardy. They seem to think, and, and some of it, people even admit it, some of it's monetary. Because obviously the NBA has already lost, what, a roughly $200 million with the China situation. Now this is, there's been speculation in reports. This could be as much as $500 million. Like, you're talking about the cap going way down, mm -hmm. and that affects player salary. So um, I, we, I, I think you hit it on the head. We don't know. This could be much longer than we think, much shorter. You would think, though, it's, we're just kind of at the beginning of it. See, where I, where I push back at, Skip, is that when they think these sporting leagues, sporting leagues are about entertainment. They're not equipped to handle something like this. So they're at the discretion of people that are in place. Mm -hmm. The CDC, an infectious disease specialist, that understand this a lot better than Adam Silver, yeah. a lot better than Mark Cuban or some of the other owners of the NBA. So I don't know, because there's a fine line between, so what was the NBA supposed to do? Okay, the coronavirus, we're going to cancel the season? Now everybody's going to say you're panicking. You don't do it when you didn't react fast enough. Hey, it's, look, I, I get it. I, 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 and I really do, I really do get that maybe we didn't give it the seriousness yep. that it deserved for the mm -hmm. simple fact, as Skip and I talked about earlier, uh, Chris, is that unless it happens to us or someone close to us, we know, but that ain't gonna happen. Especially you're talking right. about NBA, you're talking about professional athletes. Professional athletes are invincible. And they don't get right. sick. Right. They play through everything. You heard the, Man, you remember the guy played with a broken leg and he played with a, you know, he Tore his, you know, Kobe shot free throws with a torn Achilles. A so, little old virus, people get sick. Michael Jordan played with the flu. Had a hundred and something degree temperature. Yeah. Skip, so you know, we're going to play through it. So maybe it didn't get the seriousness that it deserved. But as you said, once Rudy Gobert got this, everything, the parameters that you had set in place to try to prevent one of your own from getting it had been breached. Yep. What other decision did yep. you got? It wasn't about, well, it's only, because sometimes we get, well, that's only one person. Somebody in the building gets six killed. Well, that's only one person. What well, NBA, you can't, one, you, you didn't want that one, let alone 5, 10, 15. So Adam Silver had, had no choice. But I thought, I always, I, I think he's the best commissioner. And I, hey, I love Commissioner Goodell, but I think he's the best commissioner in sports. I think he's very proactive. I think he has a pulse of things, and he try, he. He's, I believe he's always working in the best interest. Yeah, he uh, uh, with the players. Uh, he has an obligation to the owners, obviously. But he works in the, at the, uh, uh, in the interest of the players also. Right. So I think he's done a great job, Skip. But like I said, this I, is... I will give you that, but just to defend Commissioner Goodell for yeah. one moment, I know he's made some very controversial decisions and non-decisions, but this league, the National Football League, has been highly successful oh, yeah. under his oh, watch. Oh, yeah. Highly successful. Yes, so yes. don't take that. No, 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 no. No, I'm, I'm just saying, you know. I, I'm with you. Yeah. Dealing with dealing with the players, that, that's the aspect. And dealing with, uh, uh, cri I guess the crisis management is the word, right. is the word, the word I want to use, Skip. But uh, like I said, I think he's done a great job, Skip. And, and, and maybe us as a whole, as America, as the world, didn't give the respect that this mm -hmm. virus deserved. Yep. Maybe because we didn't want to incite panic. Mm -hmm. Oh, everything's going to be under control. Uh, no, it's not. Because now what you're hearing, the worst is yet to come. Mm -hmm. So I think they aired, I think they did the right thing. I think it was the only thing. I just hope other organizations take, like you said, you got the uh, uh, MLB season yeah. coming up. You got the soccer thing going on. You got the March Madness. I just hope other organizations 
follow uh, suit. Uh, just so you guys know, Woj is reporting that Donovan Mitchell has also tested positive really? for coronavirus. Ooh. He just Ooh. tweeted that out. So just so you guys know, I mean, as this develops, I just think it's the reality that we are all continuing to monitor the situation and we don't know where right. it's going to go. Right. But I think it was the right move to suspend play for right now uh, until we know more. No question. And you, you know they said the Jazz have played six teams in the last 10 yep. days. Yeah. But if you look at all the teams those six have played, it's touched all 30 teams. Yeah, they all 30 those six teams, teams have played right. other teams, and the other teams yep. have played other teams, Kip. So I told the man across the table early in the show, and you certainly can appreciate this because you've known me for a long time, to a fault, I live in my little sports bubble. And I like my movies, but I love my games. And to a fault, I just stay inside my games every night to the point that, I had my head in the sand mm -hmm. until last night about coronavirus. Right. And I still believe that in some ways, shapes and forms, the NBA owners and even the commissioners still had their heads a little bit in the sand because there was no face to coronavirus until this happened last night. And all of a sudden, I'd, I'd heard about Tom Hanks and his wife, Rita Wilson, but they were in Australia. So I'm like, OK, it happened down there, way down under. Maybe it's, it's an Australia thing. Mm -hmm. God bless both of them. They say they're they're going to be okay, but but they have contracted coronavirus. So at least we had that face of a big Hollywood star mm -hmm. on it. But I didn't have a sports face right. until this came a bolt out of the blue. Wait a second, Rudy Gobert, a two-time Defensive Player of the Year, has led this league in block shots. That guy got it, and it was that same guy, if we could see the video, who scoffed at this <laughs> two days before. And made a joke out of, I'm going to touch yeah. all of you reporters, all your, your microphones, I'm going to touch everything, all your good. reporters, if we could see that. From Rudy Gobert, this was on Monday, the after video a shoot around. Didn't yeah. age well, yeah. considering no, the situation. No. I guess it didn't age, there he is. So he's making a joke out of, let me touch all you. That's how much he feared coronavirus. Right. And he became the mm. first victim mm. of mm. coronavirus but that we knew in the NBA. You oh, mentioned oh, it. How yeah. ironic. Yeah. <laughs> you mentioned it. Now, if you see how he made light of the situation, there are probably five, six hundred million people that took that just as seriously totally as he agree. just did. Totally agree. I bet some of the reporters probably chuckled. Because <laughs> sure I think he did it. Yeah. That, that was, was that around the time when it was yeah. announced that the locker rooms would be yes. closed? Right. Yeah. So that would he's, make sense. he's probably trying to show, I'm not worried about you guys, right. you know, being around me. So all of a sudden, out of nowhere last night, my little sports bubble got punctured, and it got invaded, and as you said, it got infected. Yep. He got it, and now Donovan Mitchell, for whom I have great respect, he got it. it. Yeah. Well, now it's real because it's hit home to the sports world, and I, I told Shannon, obviously, Kobe was one of the most terrible tragedies we've ever had to try to cope with, certainly on this show and in, in the world of sports, right. and yet this was kind of Kobe-esque because, to Shannon's point, wait a second, a star player got coronavirus. Now it's real. It's a thing. After I had kind of scoffed at it, even all last right. weekend I'd scoffed at it. It'll be okay. It didn't hit home. That hits home because that's where I live in right. the sports world. So you must have been floored then because I, I have been paying attention to it for the last four or five days, right. reading as much as I could. So you, And I was still shocked. Well, I, so I, you was first, really I was first floored that they – Wait, the teams went out for the tip-off in Oklahoma City, and then some right. a, a doctor came running onto the floor, <clears> waving <throat> his hands, and they're off the floor. I'm thinking, that can't be. Well, I was watching the skip, what? and then all of a sudden, it's like breaking news. They're evacuating the uh, uh, OK. I think it was OKC they were playing, yeah, and they started evacuating. There. So I wanted to hear, and you hear the PA announcer say, everybody start to leave. Yeah. Everything's OK, but just leave in a timely and They didn't say why. Why? Right. And so, but you skip, you know, the reaction so you know, skip, you think, OK, bomb threat. Somebody called it bomb threat. You would just be... I guarantee you, all those people there, no one thought it was because of coronavirus. Nobody thought that. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. No. Because I, I have friends in Oklahoma City who were definitely, they feared it but, before last night. I mean, the thing is, like, if you're at a hotel, Skip, and you, you know, you, they say evacuate the hotel, yeah. you think it is a fire. You're not think. What's common? Right. One of the reasons why you evacuate a large building. Yeah. Somebody called the bomb threat. That's Maybe there's scary. a fire or something like that. I'm... Okay, and just for balance, Evan Fournier, who's teammate of Rudy's on the French national mm -hmm. team, did tweet last night, was just on the phone with Rudy. He's doing good, man. Let's not panic, everyone. Love you all. Well, let's not panic, but let's not 
keep our heads in the sand. Okay, tell that to Donovan Mitchell. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Well, remember, that's easy, that's easy, that's Gobert easy. was going to, he felt good enough to play. Right. Yeah. If he, you know, if he didn't have the virus, because, you know, apparently he's a healthy is athlete. questionable. Yeah. yeah. With, yeah. like, flu, flu-like symptoms, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. But um, it, well. it's, yeah, it was, it's unbelievable. I continue to monitor the situation. I feel like we're all processing it. I, I do, I do well. think they, I think, in my view, they need to cancel or postpone or cancel March Madness. Because it, it, these are professional athletes getting yep. paid mm -hmm. with the incentive of money who aren't playing. You're going to send amateurs out there who aren't making any money to play? Just and it, at least they had a little scare last night because Fred Hoiberg ended up just yes. having the flu. Right. But what if he had yeah. had corona? Well, there was a report, too, that a fan at the BYU-Gonzaga game just a few days ago had coronavirus. Mm. So now it's it, – it, the NBA is only 450 players. When you're talking about the NCAA tournament, you're talking about a, a lot more players than that. Just think about it. You win and you go on. Okay, you lose. The team that beat you, they go on. Right. So it's I, I just don't skip. I don't know how they. I don't know how they play March Madness. I yeah. really don't. And I'm sorry for the kids. I am. Be deprived because somebody's gonna miss an opportunity. Somebody's a senior. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they're never gonna get an opportunity yeah. to play a yeah. March Madness or play basketball again. But this is real life. Oh yeah, this is much bigger. Yeah. It is real. I think sports have always been our outlet, so we're gonna continue mm -hmm. to try to do that throughout the day as yep. we monitor the situation and uh, just keep that outlet. in perspective as we <laughs> just take care of ourselves. I think we gotta remember that. Chris, yep. thank you for being here. No mercy. Aaron Jones and Amari Cooper's futures in Dallas remain in question as NFL free agency approaches. Pro Football Focus has Amari as the top wide receiver and non-quarterback free agent coming off the best graded season of his career. PFF also lists Jones as the top quarterback free agent, adding that he has the fourth best forced incompletion rate during the past two seasons. And we're now joined by four-time Pro Bowl cornerback Antonio Cromarty. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for being with us today. Thank so, Crow, how big of a loss would each of these guys be? Well, honestly, I think Byron Jones would be a, a loss. You know, you, you have that loss, but I think what they have and what they've built around their defense is that front is that front seven. I think you can you can you can accommodate for losing a defensive back mm. in that in that defense. I think you, if, yeah, I think you, I think you can. I think when you can when you think about it, their front seven is is been pretty good and it's only gonna get better. So if you add just a, a B plus corner into that secondary where he don't give up any deep passes to keep everything in front of him, you win games that way. Amari Cooper, it's different. You losing him, you losing that number one receiver. Mm -hmm. And I think when you look at the games where he didn't have a productive game, man, they lost games. He well, was the number one receiver. Game a road game. And I <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, there you go. So I just think he would be a bigger loss than losing Byron Jones. I just think overall, um, he, he's a bigger loss for that because he's the number one receiver. And he brings that energy and he's that safety blanket that Dak always needed. He run a slant, he's going to be open on the slant. That's his number one route. Yep. He could turn that slant into a 20-yard, into an 80-yard touchdown. 70, I agree. So yep. those are the things that I'm looking at from that summer. As a, as a corner with the front seven you have, you can plug in and you can plug and play any corner. So, so real quick, what, what, what's your assessment of Byron Jones just in and of himself mm -hmm. as a corner? Or I think, how do you rank him? How do you see him? I think he's, I think he's one of the top corners in the NFL right now. I think last year, I honestly think last year wasn't his best year. I thought the year before was a whole lot better. He was more consistent in his play and his technique and the things he's done. He was able to shut down receivers. I think he was a little bit inconsistent this year. I don't, I don't consider him being, I mean, I guess how the secondary is now, you have to put him as the number one corner because there's really no other free agent cornerbacks that's out there. He's so you one have, so you have to put yeah. him as the number one. You have no other choice but to put him as the number one. Is he worth $16, mm. $16 million a year? No, I don't think so. I think he still needs to prove himself. Mm. I think the thing is sometimes what happens, free agency is tricky because we've seen guys have these extraordinary years going into free agency, mm -hmm. and we see guys that put so much pressure on themselves wanting to do well that they kind of taper off. I'm, I'm not sure that happened to him. The thing that concerns me about him, Byron Jones, is that he doesn't take the ball away. No. And so that, it's just not good enough to bat the ball down. You got to give your offense an extra possession. Yes. They, they did. He doesn't bat the ball down. He <laughs> doesn't bat. No, I'm serious. I can't remember one bat down the whole year. You figured all those years he only has two interceptions. Two. Two. Fact, you, one, one in 16 and one in 17. Two. Two interceptions. 
And you will pay sixteen million for that. You, so you you get two and a quarter. <laughs> you know, like man, you. Huh? Have, I, mean, I think as a, as a, if you want to, let me like this. If you're gonna ask for that type of money. You gotta be a game changer. You gotta be a Patrick Thank Peterson. You. Okay. You gotta be. He, he won't need to ask. They'll just give it. They go give you. I mean, but you got okay. So think about this. It was the 2000, 2011, 2012 after the lockout year. Yeah. The highest paid corner that came out that year, or 2012, was actually was Brandon Carr. Made ten million dollars. So you have made ten million dollars going to Dallas, but Dallas pays they pays the people because they needed that position. Right. They did. So like it's the market's gonna it's still gonna be up and down. Yeah. Uh, how you no matter how you look at it. Like, I'm not going to pay a corner that can't make plays on the ball $16 million. That's just my – I just – if I'm paying $16 million, I need you to take away half of the field, and you better be make, making interceptions on that play, too. That ain't, that ain't, that's not his And that's game. not his game. And I agree. Amari would cripple the Cowboys. Skip, you talk about him on the road. Imagine not having Amari, yeah. period. So now what you do at home, if you're crippled on the road, <laughs> you're really you're really crippled. You're really hindered at home. Um, this is why you traded the first-round pick to get Amari Cooper because you said – uh, Dak needed a true number one. Obviously, Dez didn't pan out. You had moved on from Dez. Mm -hmm. And the receivers that you had, they weren't getting it done. You look at Dak, you look at the, since he's been there, you look at Dak's production, it's night and day. He's a different quarterback with Amari. So you, you have to get, and the only thing that concerns me, Skip, is that I'm afraid is that if you let Amari get to the open market, Skip, somebody will give him Julio Jones-type money to sign which the Cowboys can't match because they still got Dak. And even if you franchise Dak, that's $33 million. 36. So, Scott, <laughs> you, you got you, you got to you just basically say, hey, look, Amari, this is what we're going to do. We'll give you, you know, Mike, Mike Thomas money. It's, you know, basically it's five years, $100 million, But it's, you know, fun, like a lot of funny money. But Amari Cooper is the, the – if you lose Amari Cooper, Skip, you're not going to Super Bowl. You do know that, right? You might not even make the playoff game, mm. lose Amari. So that means Amari price going up. Unless we draft CD Lamb in the first. Oh, round. Then, oh here we go. <laughs> you know, yeah, here I we like would go. Fit. I like we might fit. just go all but the way. I, but I thought I was order one CD Lamb. Well, everybody's going to want. Wait, wait, wait. You might have to make a little trade up. <laughs> yeah. You gonna give you wouldn't be disappointed if you got Jerry Judy. No, I wouldn't be. He, actually, he, I wouldn't. He, he, he's I think more technically. He's a little better. That's just me. Judy is more technically sound than Amari. Stronger. Snatch it. Oh, you think he better than uh, Judy after the catch? Yeah. <sighs> Have you seen what he does? You can't get him on the ground. You see, you see Judy them rock. Did you see the Oklahoma, Texas? Oh, yeah. Skip, you oh. can't teach. You, Skip, you oh, can't teach. Oh, I love the kids. Did you, Skip, did you, you can't teach route running. You, can you, did you see what this guy did? Yeah. You hey, see, CD can run routes. Not, not, like, like, not like Judy. Judy. <laughs> Judy. Not like Judy. He was the one and only receiver that Jalen Hurts had. There are four track runners, you know, like <laughs> and all four of them are first round picks. But, but he runs his routes are so precise. You don't okay, you don't I see got, that. I, I got Especially a college, college kid. No. Mm -mm. Okay, so I cannot tell you how conflicted I am as a Cowboy fan about both of these guys. And I'm even more conflicted about Amari than I'm about Byron. And I give you, <laughs> I give you just because of Dak, comfort zone, I give you that's a little bigger loss. But I gotta tell you. Listen to this. Eight games at home, eight games on the road. Mm -hmm. He caught 52 balls at home. That'll work. 27 on the road. Yeah. And not only did he only catch 27, at the Jets, he just he caught one ball for three yards and just <laughs> said, I don't feel like playing. I don't know. He was fine. He came back the very next Sunday night against Philly and just ate him up, just ran him off the field with 105 yards. And, and then... Here, there's the one ball against the Oh, Jets. that was against the Eagles. <laughs> no, that was the Jets. And then he's standing on the sidelines the rest of the game, and they lost 24-22. to 22. And then this is at New England. Stephon Gilmore made him quit. And we had Rob Ryan on yesterday, and he was saying there's only one other receiver I've seen quit on his team, and that was that guy in Oakland. So he said the same guy, has, he, he's never seen anybody just say, ask out of a game. You, you, you never made a receiver quit. Maybe you did on the field, but he didn't ask out of the game, right? No. He asked out of the game, went and stood, and this is the Eagles. Jason Garrett finally said, I have seen enough. You have quit on me enough on the road. You're out. He yanked him. <laughs> Remember, this is the number one free agent receiver. Yeah. He got yanked by his own head coach, who's obviously no longer the coach, but the staff decided, we've seen enough of this. Yeah. You're out of the game for the last four or five plays of the game. To say we got a better chance. Yeah. With Jason Witten and Gallup yeah. and the and Gallup and, Gallup and the uh, who uh, uh, the guy from Cobb, yeah. Randall Cobb, and, and, the, and the, Skip, they brought Remember, the backup the, tight end in, and, and they had Tavon in the game. Yes. Tavon ran by somebody, got open, and Dak missed it. Okay, so that's what 
Okay, are you going to give him twenty million? Yeah. I mean, I, I love him, and he's a route runner, and he's got he's big and fast. When he's right mentally, he's big and fast right. that he can work. Well, John Gruden, remember, John Gruden said, "No, I'm out." If you give me but, a first, my, my, my thing is this: good. How much if he's going to be in? I'm not going to get somebody twenty million dollars that's going only going to give me half of what they really want. Okay, well, thank potential. you. Okay, well, that's I don't thing. know. But Skip, that's his history. Remember, Skip in Oakland. He would give you 200, he'd give you 150, and then he'd give you 30, 40, 40, 40. Because when he well, well, still made what? two Pro Bowls. Yes. And, well, this year he gave you uh, one for three. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean. So what am I supposed to do with that? Not sure he had over 100 yards his last seven So do games. you overpay for eight games? Yep. Yep. I guess so. Free, that's, I guess that's, 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 what free agency, agency. that's what free agency do. <laughs> okay. Now back to Byron Jones. Look, I, I like him, but I've never loved him because he, he was the all-time freak athlete at the Combine. I don't know if we've ever, at, at your position, I've never seen anything like him. No. He set the world record for that standing broad jump you do at the Combine. He set the world record at the Combine. He had the third highest vertical in, in the last 15 years 44 and a half inches. at the Combine. Yeah. He ran 4.37. That was at his pro day. But 4.37 will work. You were fat. What would you, you were 4 Three-ish? Four, three, one. Yeah, okay. So Somewhere he's in now. your ballpark. Yeah. He's in your and, – and he's 6'1", 200. You're a big corner. He's not as big as you. But still, that, that's he, – he was ranked going to the combine the 25th overall cornerback. Not not defense. 25th overall cornerback mm -hmm. going to the combine, right. and the Cowboys took him 27th overall in the first right. round. Think of the leap that he made right. because he was the all-time workout warrior. Yeah, right? well, I, well, I think Bruce Aaron said it the best. The tape don't lie. Okay, the tape, don't lie, it <laughs> yeah. doesn't. It no, I, doesn't I agree. So he doesn't have any instinct for seeing and catching the football. <laughs> no. He doesn't even get his hands and on that's what And that's what DB is. DB is yeah. all about instinct. Sure. And I don't know how good his instincts and, and, are. And you can't coach it and you can't teach no. it. No. You had it. Obviously, Drell, Dion, we go right. to the top. Right. But I told you Herman Edwards was great. Everson Walls that I covered was great. Everson instincts. was great, yeah. Uh, just the instincts, yeah. just you know, knows, I don't know, honey badger, know. just knows for the football, right? right? Yeah. And, he, and when those guys got their hands on the ball, they normally came down catch, with it. I, he get his hands on the ball, the ball hit the dirt. Okay, okay, so how can, can he cover? Yeah, he can cover. Can he game change? No, he doesn't change anything. Mm. Can you replace him? I don't know. That's it's still pretty hard to find a guy of this this sort of athletic. Well, you get well, you, I mean, you, you get, get your, just, there's you some get five just, million dollar guys out there skip that yeah, give that, you that kind of production. Get, yeah, I'm about to say might get two. Yeah, okay. might get some two so, million so dollar guys. What's the only silver lining, as in metallic silver, as in Dallas, to this guy Amari Cooper? <laughs> what's the only metallic silver lining? Oh, he wants This to guy a says I want to be a cowboy for life, and and I'll take that to my bank because that would indicate maybe. He'll say, okay, I'll take this, and it'll be good, but maybe not. Well, he better take it money. before. They, don't let him get to the market. Okay, well, let him get can't. to the market. <laughs> if you and get you to the market. You better do it. We're counting down to yeah. the market, right? Yes. You better yes. do it sooner than you later. Because if you can get him done, even if you're you're going to overpay, but but if you get him done and you put the tag on DAC, right. then at least you got a chance, right? Right. Mm -hmm. right. All right. So, but that's what, Skip, that's what happens out. when you have good players. They've done a great job of drafting. Yeah. So, but you can't keep, Skip, you can't keep everybody. The system wasn't set up for you to keep everybody. Yeah. I mean, think about it. You got all those offensive linemen under contract. You got Zeke under contract. You got a lot of those defensive players mm -hmm. under contract. contract. Yeah. You can't keep everybody. Okay. What do we always talk about on this show? Basketball or football? Yeah. He's got that dog in him. Yeah. Amari Cooper ain't got no dog. <laughs> I'm sorry. He just got, am I right? He, he, he just different. He just different. He, he's a guy. You know, some guys, and Crow, you know this. Some guys you can't yell at. They're going to no. tank. Well, that's mm -hmm. what they're Gruden found out. He went up. in the tank no. for Gruden. Tank. But yeah. some guys, they're like, okay, I'm gonna show this mofo. Yeah. I'm gonna go yeah. get it done. Yeah. He's not that guy. So, do you think John Gruden lost any sleep over losing? No, 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 no. But see, Gruden is the type of guy, Skip. If you, if you, if you. See, this is how Gruden works. If he says something to you and you don't come back at him, he gonna keep coming. Yep. He gonna keep coming. Kind of he gonna sure. keep coming. Hmm. So that's why, like Sapp and Brooks, they guys like, oh, hold on, bro, you, you can't talk to me like that. But see, I think a lot of the great coaches are like that. They gonna say yeah. something to you, and if you don't respond back, they gonna keep coming at you. Yeah. yeah. And then by that time, hey, you not gonna say nothing. They sending you somewhere. Yeah, cause they they look at you. They don't want they they don't obviously you know you don't try to fight somebody, but you gotta let them know. Okay, now. Okay, that's enough. I get what you're Correct. saying. I get I what you're saying. Yeah.
People respond differently, right? To yes. Yes. I don't know if I do well with that. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, That's the first thing. I, when I went to Baltimore, <laughs> to Baltimore, the first thing I told Brian Bill, I said, "You can coach me, coach me, coach hard. me hard. You can coach me in front of the team, but you can't curse me." It's a different. It's a different. So that's good to know. <laughs> <laughs> I need to work out. No mercy. Today seems to bring a new report in the Tom Brady free agency watch. And next week, the greatest QB of all time's contract with the Patriots is up. And his agents can begin negotiating with other teams at noon Eastern on March 16th. Mike Freeman reports that whatever Brady decides to do will have, quote, a major domino effect on the rest of the league. Antonio Cromartie still with us, a pro. How valuable would Tom Brady be on the open market? I think he's going to, I think when you're looking at Tom Brady's age, I think he's going to probably request around $30 million a year, mm -hmm. 29 to 30. And I just say that because, I mean, what's the most he's been paid uh, out in New England? I think it's 25. 23. 20, 20, 23 yeah. 20, that was just 30, last year. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. That was just last, I mean, the last season. So um, you're talking about a guy that has six rings that's still going to play at a high level. Um, I think he's going to request between 29 to $30 million a year. You know, that's, that's how I look at it. I think his value is still there. Uh, he brings a lot to the game still. I, I think he still can get the young guys and, and put put it on be, put on a team that can go out and actually be in the playoffs and have a chance at winning the Super Bowl. Mm. And that team will probably be my L.A. Chargers. Really? Yeah. Your L.A. Chargers? Yeah. How are they yours? Ownership, I like it. I like ownership, huh? Yeah. <laughs> hey, when you, if you draft me, you mine. <laughs> I'm yours. Oh, that's it's that's with <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Skip, right. for me, He's not the domino of the league. I think there are only four or five teams that are interested in Tom Brady. I believe there's only four or five teams that he's actually interested in. Skip, if I'm the Seattle, he's not holding up what I'm doing. No. He's not holding up Green Bay. He's not holding up New Orleans. He's only holding up a handful of teams. If I'm on the market for a D lineman, if I'm on the market for a corner or a receiver, Tom Brady has no impact on me. Yeah. It's only the, guy, only the teams, and we know who the teams are. We have them up on the, on the screen. That's it. And I don't believe Tennessee. I believe Tennessee moving on. Like, we're not uprooting now. 49ers not uprooting theirs. Uh, Tampa's going to get Teddy Bridgewater. And, and, Skip, when I look at it, okay, Tom Brady has to really assess this. Who gives, who, which team is a quarterback away from the Super Bowl? That's it. Mm -hmm. And people are like, well, he should just go back to New England. Is New England a quarterback away from the Super Bowl? So then, Absolutely not. Yeah, exactly. They weren't last whoa, year whoa, whoa, either. Whoa, whoa. He almost took them there. Whoa. No, no, no. He went close. He went in close to the Super Bowl. Don't Come on, now. Don't do that. He Come on. two seed in the palm of his hand until Belichick spit it up. Oh, hold on. Oh, nice. Uh, the two seed You know what happened in the last race? Uh, season game? Yeah, y'all lost. <laughs> you lost. It's not y'all. Yeah, yeah. It's not y'all. No, no, no. Okay. Oh, yeah. You got two teams. Yeah, you got two teams. Tom Brady pulled off yet another fourth quarter comeback drive. No, he did he did too. Skip. He went 70 yards for a touchdown. It's 24 to 20. With the game over. Home team with the, three minutes with left. With the game over. And guess what? Ryan Fitzpatrick took Miami 80 yards in 13 plays oh against God. Belichick's defense and had to score a touchdown to win and pulled it off. How do you do that what, against Belichick's it, defense? They would have been the two seed. They'd get a bye week. Coach, That's what they need. Coach Belichick says, yeah. Coach Belichick says, first of all, we only gave up like 14, 15 points a game. We should have been plenty good enough. Had you been the Tom Brady that everybody says you are, we'd have had the number one seed yeah. sold up yeah. in week 12. The, the, the way they, they had that average was uh, the first eight games were sensational, like all-time great. The last eight games, not so much. But even, they were 10th in yeah, points allowed like over the last even eight games. Even with that being said, Crow, even though the defense was historically great in the first eight games, your mm -hmm. guy wasn't. In the first, in the first eight games, he was not That's pretty good. Because even oh, in the Miami after game, three weeks, he's ranked number one in the league. Don't oh, you gonna go after three weeks? Well, what, what happened to the they last? count? The <laughs> count? <laughs> yeah. That's not even a quarter of the season. And then Come on Elgin now, got beat up. He, he had ribs and, he and had shoulder tough. and knee, what? and he led the league in drops. You like that? Well, if you stop That's throwing it with three guys, he got three guys on him. He wouldn't get beat up. But no, I, I mean, I think the value what he's gonna bring is he has six rings. That's the value he's gonna that bring. Is he's correct. gonna he's gonna he's gonna bring that championship mentality. But you got to think about what, like you say, like Shannon said, the biggest thing is what teams are interested. I think Tampa, like Tampa's not gonna take him. Tampa's gonna go after somebody younger. They're gonna have to go to Ted the Bridge. You don't think they take him if he's knocked? No, door? no, no. He's not. He's not. He's oh not come on, him. it's like I'm not, been speculation. Let's, to go to Tampa. So you gonna, so you gonna Bruce change? Aaron's but Bruce Aaron's is not gonna come change on. his offense for Tom Brady. 
Yeah, he would. No, he's not. Would. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't coach so. great quarterbacks. Yeah, but he ran his offense him? also. Huh? Yeah. Carson Palmer was Carson Palmer was with him, but he ran who offense? His offense. You don't think he tailored no. Tom Brady? No. I, I, I think I think I think the Chargers are the best fit. Okay, well, I, it, it could that's, be great that's, fit. That's, that's, I think that's the Spot. best Well, let him go to if he go to if he go to my homeboy, A Lynn, you know, yeah. A Lynn, my guy. So okay. You got that? Yep. And my homeboy be in trouble. Oh, oh. <laughs> there you go. Oh. Yeah. Right? Everybody, everybody keep telling him to avoid the Raiders and my home uh, and on the Chargers. Mm. Cause you have to deal with my homeboy twice a year. You want them problems? You want them problems. <sighs> he would want any problem because he's afraid of <laughs> nobody and nothing. <laughs> nobody and nothing, even at 43. He's never been afraid of anything before. And he would love – the Chargers got some weapons. They do. Yeah. And, again, they have a high draft pick, and they could draft an offensive lineman. They plug right in. I mean, what, they just had a, a great trade with what, Trey Thomas? Yeah. yeah. I mean, so they you, you – you, you Trey Turner. Just, Trey Turner, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Trey Turner. That, that, you put him at the guard position. Now you serve the guard position. That, that was the worst position for them last year. Yeah. The inside. So Draft, your, draft yeah. your tackle. you good to go. The Beckton kid. They got the kid out of Iowa. I don't know if you're the guard or a tackle. I mean, they got some – you can shore it up. I mean, the the Chargers got nice skill, nice mm -hmm. skill players. Resign Hunter Henry. You got your tight end. Mm -hmm. I ain't saying he grunt, but he's play, he's pretty good. good. Yeah, when he's healthy. You got the Williams yeah. kid. You got Keenan Allen. You hey, resign Eckler. Keenan Allen in the slot. Yeah. Ooh. Oh yeah. Austin Eckler. He can be your little mm -hmm. Deion Lewis or whatever. Mm -hmm. He can be no. Danny Woodhead all over Woodhead. here. Woodhead. There, there you go. go. So you're missing the boat on this because everybody's waiting to see what that guy does because look at. Look at Ryan Tannehill. I still say Tennessee. If Brady said yes to Tennessee, Vrabel would say, please, come here. Well, he needed to say that before, okay. before, so, before we get the free agency. Okay. <laughs> well, then, would Ryan Tannehill be on the market? Would Derek Carr, if, if Tom decides to go to, to Oakland, we don't think that's or it's now Las Vegas, right. would Derek Carr suddenly become available? Yes, he would. At Jacoby Brissett, you love the indie thing. I do. Okay. I like Jacoby Brissett. Again, is he a world beater? But but is he a starting? Yeah, he could be a starting quarterback. He's put up some pretty good numbers. Yeah, he did. And they were pretty good with him. What if he suddenly became available? Well, teams are just waiting like, who's out there? Who's going to be available? Well, it depends what number 12 does. Well, I think, Skip, you, we're going to know early on. It'll start seeping out of what, what transpires. And once we see the movement, because some of these quarterbacks are going to have to go. I mean, everybody just can't. Yeah. You just can't hold up. I can't run the risk of waiting on Brady and miss out, let's say, on a Tannehill or miss out on a Teddy Bridgewater because I'm waiting on a guy. Yeah. So we're going to know for probably the first day, mm -hmm. movement's going to happen. Okay. So this man knows Tom Brady because this man, he's beaten Tom Brady several times. I looked it up. You were 4-10 and 10 against Brady. That's, 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 the, that's the terrible record. Okay. No, it's not. <laughs> I mean, come on. You won four times against him? I think they're all Jets. Right? All Jets. All Jets. One with the Chargers. Okay. You're one and two in the postseason, but you had one big postseason win at Fox. Yeah, Park. we right. yeah, yeah, you know. Tom and I split. We one and one. Okay. Nobody cares. Oh, <laughs> Nobody cares. That was irrelevant. <laughs> <laughs> I just said, I didn't want to throw my five hundred record. <laughs> you did not play. That did not help me. Oh, this guy, know what? that this did not help me at all. Pro. This guy right. had to defend the mind of Tom Brady because he's gonna beat you with his mind more than his body. Well, he right? wasn't he wasn't quite that Tom. He wasn't huh? quite the Tom that, okay. <laughs> that, that he but that but he became. He's <laughs> never had a rocket launcher no, 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 arm, you know. No, yeah. It's just pretty good. Yeah. And everything's very catchable and very very accurate, but he would beat you when he beat you. Yeah, up he, here, he understood right? the mismatches. Yeah, that's the, that's what football is about. Once you okay. understand your mismatches, it's over. Okay, my point is, at forty three, he still understands the mismatches, yes. and he still has enough arm to make it work. Heat and, him up, huh? What the team start doing? They start heating him up. Okay, because he doesn't move his way. You can say he never moved. No, he, he still got good pocket feet. Nah, we just heat yeah. him up. Oh no! What you do with Tom is that. See, teams make the mistake. They think you got to come off the edge. No, you got to come up the middle. Yeah, right? there you go. To get him out to the edges. What happened in the AFC Championship game in 2015 at Denver? Was it the championship? Game? Yeah. Yes, it was. It was the championship game. They heated him up. <laughs> they were coming from everywhere, and he was <laughs> falling backwards the whole well, game. Well, they didn't really have to heat him up because he had wear and he had. He had uh, Malik and Wolf, yep. so they could just collapse the pocket and play coverage. Okay, and it was a long day for Tom Brady, but he was still thrown into the end zone at the end of the game to win the game. Remember that? Oh, once they got the lead, it was just over. Just oh, really? Okay. Got him. Yeah. I was there, too. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you wouldn't let me on your show. One one. You wouldn't yeah. let me on so your show. You I wanted that. to come back. Can't you wanted to come back? Yeah, I've had enough of you. <laughs> <laughs> and look where we are now.
now. Uh, no, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. We appreciate it. No mercy. Let's talk Vegas. The Las Vegas Raiders have been the subject of many rumors with most surrounding their QB situation. John Gruden and Mike Mayock have done their best to play coy and praise Derek Carr, but even Mayock admitted at the Combine that he's always evaluating the position. And during an event in Las Vegas this week, Gruden was asked about Tom Brady and responded, quote, you're killing me, man. We love our quarterback. Mm. Which can be taken a lot of ways. <laughs> given yeah. uh, Shannon, who is the opening day QB for the Raiders? I believe it's Derek Carr. Skip, I, I just don't see Tom Brady in Vegas because I don't believe they're just a quarterback away from winning. And it's, it always strikes me when I hear coaches and GM, you know, when it's, it's, I believe it's a situation they love Derek Carr, but they're not in love with Derek Carr. Mm -hmm. Because the quarterback and the head coach, Skip, the relationship and the GM is supposed to be like a marriage. Yep. So you go home and you tell your wife or you tell your husband, you know what, I love you, but I'm looking to upgrade. Mm. And see how that plays out. Yep. Yeah. Because that's what that's what Mike Mayock did at the combine skip. He did. I did. Yeah, yeah. We we like, but we look at the upgrade. Yeah. Mm. Nah, nah, bro. Very nice. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Mm. Now, at some point in time, you have to accept Derek Carr for what he is. He's good, not great. Skip, we just everybody. Skip, do we do we understand? Everybody's not meant to be great. Everybody can't be Brady and and, and Manning and uh, Big Man Peyton. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Marino and L. Everybody can't be that. Yep. But they won't. Ooh, can, no, it's not meant to be everybody to win a Super Bowl yep. because Super Bowls wouldn't have their meaning. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be hard fought to get there and to win it. And if every win, just get there and win it, what's special about it? Yep. So, Skip, I believe Derek Carr is a good quarterback. Yep. I've never. And, me and Steve used to date, and I told Steve when we first started working, like, yeah, he okay, but he ain't, he ain't a researcher. Steve, yeah, yeah Steve, mm -hmm. great. So now we get, that's why we able to beat you down, because mm -hmm. he and I, we see eye to eye now. Mm. Wait, yep. what? When did that ever happen? Uh, since 2016, mm, September yeah. 6, 2016. Oh. Is where it all started. Mm. Been beating him down ever since. Yep. yep. So, no, Skip, I, I don't see it, because I don't see Tom Brady going to a situation where he's, he's the missing piece, the only missing piece from winning the Super Bowl. Okay, so John Gruden said, and I quote, we love our quarterback. Our quarterback's a really good player, Derek Carr. I want to reiterate that to everybody here in Las Vegas. We've got a good young quarterback, and the film, the statistics, and the analytics prove it. I'm not buying one ounce of this. Well, tell your general manager that. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I, I will tell yourself that. I think he's trying to convince himself. Yeah, you may be right. Skip. I told you after hard knocks, just by reading the body language between the lines, I don't think he ever loved Derek Carr, and I definitely don't think he's ever in love with mm -hmm. Derek Carr. And I think they're still looking for a way out of Derek Carr because he's just barely good enough to keep the job. Mm -hmm. And he did have... He had a pretty good year last right. year. 21 touchdowns to eight interceptions. Brady was 24 to eight. Okay. Mm -hmm. His QBR last year was really good, Derek Carr. So if you go analytics, he was 10th. Brady was 19th, mm. which you bring up again and again and again. No, no, they bring it up at one time. Uh, today. Catchable passes, Brady was 6th to Derek Carr's 8th. Hmm, that's interesting. Oh, oh, oh. Huh. And then how about air distance? Because Derek Carr was dinking and dunking. He was 22nd in air distance. Brady was 7th. Who was Derek Carr throwing to? That Darren Waller who took over hard knocks and emerged. <laughs> what, what, what happened? Well, he, he led them by far in catches while Tom Brady had the least productive tight end collection in the National Football League. So that's a big advantage for Derek Carr, right? Yep. And who did you love and who did you promote and push for rookie of the year? Josh, Josh Jacobs, who ran wild for 1,150 yards. He was really good. Yep. Kyler was a little better. I told you he'd win it. He did. But Josh Jacobs really took a lot of heat off Derek Carr and made it more, more plausible that he could look pretty good at quarterback. And he looked pretty good, but they went seven and Y'all had Sonny Michelle. Seven and nine. Huh? Y'all had Sonny Michelle. Would you take Josh Jacobs or Sonny Michelle right now? Oh, whoa, hold on. Huh? Whoa, 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 whoa. Mm -hmm. You didn't say that when he was running wild over people in the playoffs just two years ago. Two years ago, he had a good playoffs. He didn't have a great regular season, but he had good playoffs. Yeah. So did Rex Burkhead. You love Rex Burkhead? That's what Tom has to work with, but he makes you two. You see that? Nah, that's he what he has two. to work with. That's what he has to work with. You love they, Rex Burkhead. Hold on. I just, hold on. Who scored the winning touchdown at Kansas City two years ago? Rex, Rex Burkhead. Burkhead. What about son, uh, uh, Michelle? 
162 yards yeah. rushing the game, and now Skip just throw him out like the yesterday's Josh Jacobs, press. Sony Michelle, who you got? Who you got? Josh Jacobs. You take him all day and all night and yes. every day and Sunday, right? Yes. Okay, well, that's who Derek Carr had to work with. So let's not overreact to his season because <sighs> – he had some weapons Why you, that Tom Brady ha did oh, not have. Well, uh, this is what I'm Can on. you imagine Tom Brady with a real tight end? He yeah. used to have one till last year. I'm, I'm trying to figure out. Benjamin Watson at 39 years why you, of age? Why you really? do that? If Matt anybody, Lacoste? So, you won't talk, so Tom Brady is the only one allowed to have good players to throw to mm. or run the ball for. Well, all of a sudden, he had nobody to throw to. I mean, can you imagine if these quarterbacks, when Randy Moss was in the prime, had three years of Randy Moss? Or they had eight years of Gronk? Mm. Ooh, Jenny, what can they do? Mm. If they had prime Julian Edelman and Wes Welker? Here's the point. If John Gruden's phone rings and it's Tom Brady, <laughs> coach, I'd like to join you in Vegas. No. Well, what do you think the answer would be? No, I love Derek no, Carr. Do you, do you think he'd I say that? He would. Stop it. Nah. Come he gonna on. Spin, he gonna spin up. He gonna spin up some more Mark, uh, uh, Mark Davis money frivolously. Mm. Yep. Who do they need to launch them in Vegas into their well, obviously, yeah, well, obviously. Come on. If Derek Carr? No. Tom Brady? You better believe it. Yeah. But he's not going there because the, the, the bottom line to this whole discussion is there's no way Tom could coexist with John Gruden. John Gruden wants to be the, the quasi-quarterback on and off the field, right? Like, he's, he's the star. He wants to be the star. He wants to be the star. Yes. And there's no, there's no way Tom who took over? Who took over hard knocks, Skip? <sighs> He was hard enough. Who's taking over every team he's ever coached? Thank you. Thank Except you. maybe the one. Tampa. Maybe he won the Super Bowl with a right. team where he was okay. third fiddle. Of that right, team, right, right. But you know, those, those were veteran guys. This is a this is a young team. Yep. I mean, you weren't gonna talk to Sapp or Brooks or Simeon, nope. right? No, you weren't gonna talk to them like Agreed. like he talked to those guys. Totally agree. It's interesting. Yep. And we still don't know. March sixteenth is Here the we deadline go. where teams. Well, not the deadline. It's the beginning when teams can start talking to. Yeah. Them. Oh. 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 Things are going to happen. What happens if the okay, phone don't ring? Gonna... What happens if no phone calls? Mm. Uh? Shannon, there's going to be phone calls. Okay, okay. I can pretty much Want to bet? Uh, guarantee that. That would be Tom Senior calling. it. Hey, are you okay? No. Oh, <laughs> so you think Tom's going to be forced into retirement because nobody's going to want him? <laughs> yeah, I'm just just watch. I'm just saying. Yep. You say mm. these things. I mean, he'll get, get like three or four. He's going to get like three or four calls. Shannon. Uh, all right. No mercy. And we do have some breaking news that I mentioned a little earlier in the show. The Utah Jazz just announced that Donovan Mitchell has tested positive for the coronavirus. This comes after Rudy Gobert tested positive prior to last night's game between the Jazz and the Thunder, prompting the NBA to announce that it's suspending the season. All players and personnel from the Jazz were tested and quarantined, but according to The Athletic, Mitchell was the only other one to test positive. So there's that. Uh, Shannon, your reaction? to really how this is unfolding now. Well, uh, fortunately, uh, Skip, Donovan Mitchell was the only Utah Jazz player mm -hmm. that tested positive. Um, today, I think it was reported that the OKC Thunder players are gonna get tested today. Yeah. So hopefully all those come back negative. Mm -hmm. um, I guess it was just, if this virus is what they say it is, pandemic now, we knew it was just a matter of time before it touched someone in sports. Yep. And I think it gave it the seriousness that it deserved by this happening. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it happened to, you know, um, Rudy Gobert and now Donovan Mitchell. Um, but, Skip, I'm not if, – if, if it, was hard, it was hard for me to – I'm surprised that only Donovan, considering that Rudy Gobert got it and yep. how contagious this virus is. Mm -hmm. So I guess that is a blessing – that only one person has uh, that we know of thus far that's been tested has the virus. But uh, I'm not surprised. I'm 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 sad by this uh, uh, that these guys have to go through this. And um, I guess the OKC is also they're they've been quarantined. And anybody yep. that's come in contact with Utah in the last ten days have have to do self quarantine. Mm -hmm. But it was just a matter of time, Skip. And I'm I'm, I'm hopefully these guys are feeling better in in no time. Agree. So here's the weird part of this. <clears throat> 58 people in the Utah Jazz traveling party were tested. That includes all the personnel. I don't know if it includes the radio, TV, right. broadcast, sure, probably sure. everybody Every in the point. traveling yes. party. Yes. 58 humans got tested. Only two tested positive. But the weird part is those two are the two best players on the team. Right. And if there's 
any silver lining to that, and it's barely one, at, at least this sends the message to the sports world and then right. in turn the rest of the world, hey, this virus is not picking any it's favorites. It's indiscriminate. You know, it, yeah, it doesn't care. Yeah. It, it just singled out the two best players on a pretty good Utah Jazz mm -hmm. team that's actually been playing quietly much right. better than, than it was early in the season where it's becoming mm -hmm. a factor. Right. So Rudy Gobert, two-time defensive player of the year, is averaging 15 points and 14 rebounds. It's pretty good. That's good. He's got coronavirus. Donovan Mitchell, leading team with 24 points scored, four, four rebounds and four assists, not bad. But again, on any given night, he can go for 40. Mm -hmm. Probably the best. He's the most talented player on the team. Yeah. He has coronavirus. Right. Wow. Really? Mm -hmm. Just shocking to me. Those two became the first two, quote unquote, sort of victims of coronavirus. And I'm going to read this tweet one more time just to keep our perspective from Evan Fournier, who's a very close friend of Rudy Gobert's because they're both French, played on the French national team together, was just on the phone with Rudy. He is doing good, man. Let's not panic, everyone. Love you all. Okay, just for perspective, uh, we hope he's doing good. Right. We hope Donovan will be okay. But still, the message is getting sent shockwaves around basketball and then maybe football and baseball and soccer and XFL and March Madness. Look look what just happened. Yeah, but Skip, I, I believe when he says don't panic, but there is levels to this. You don't have to panic, but you can yeah, be diligent. No, you, can be you can be very oh, diligent. I, I mean, I, I think he's like, okay, it's either don't panic. Okay, what are the steps before you get to panic? Yep. So... Okay. <sighs> Tough. My world just got turned upside down. Yeah. Yeah. The Big Ten tournament also just announced they've canceled. Have they? They Ooh, have canceled as well. So now we just wait and see Ooh. who else is to follow the M MLS has announced that they postponed for yep. 30 days at this point. It, it's it's hard because it's real and we're all just there is no Ooh. we don't have the answers. Yeah, right the thing now. about this, maybe this, that's what it is. This virus skip is it's indiscriminate. indiscriminate. Black, white, rich, nope. poor, doesn't matter. Nope, yeah. doesn't matter. Take care of yourself. That's all we can say right now. We're going to keep yep. talking about what we love, and that is sports. No mercy. The Packers reportedly intend to release Jimmy Graham today rather than waiting until the start of the new league year, March 18th. The move will shed $8 million from Green Bay salary cap. In his two seasons with the Packers, Graham scored just five touchdowns, half of what he scored in Seattle in 2017. So, Shannon, how much do you think he has left? Not much. Skip, Jimmy Graham has always been known as a receiving threat, and he was a very good one at that. Uh, he and Gronk used to go back and forth with who's the best tight end at the time. Yep. But he's no longer that. He doesn't add anything to the run game. He's never wanted to get his nose bloody by in the run game. So now you're not the receiving threat you once were. You don't add anything to the run game, so what's your value? Mm -hmm. Remember, Skip, how we talked about when you become a special, if you're a specialist and you can no longer do the thing that you're known for as your specialty, then what are you? But I don't see it. His ultimate specialty is red, red zone. zone because he's still six feet, seven yeah. inches tall and 265 pounds. And I give you his last four years, he's, his stats have declined, mm -hmm. but he did make five Pro Bowls yes. the last in 2017. And I would not mind my Dallas Cowboys saying, hey, at a bargain, at a bargain, we'll take him as a you red just had zone. A a, you just had a, a, a bargain. Mm. He uh, he about to hit the free agent market. You yeah. had a guy in the bargain. Jason you want it? Whitten? Yeah, you, you want it? Guy you could outrun. Yeah. You could <laughs> I got probably... to outrun Jimmy Graham, too. You, you know what? Oh. You probably could. But yeah. you're not six feet seven. No, 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 no. You know, you're like about 5'11, right? <laughs> Skip. 38 <laughs> catches, 447 yards. The lowest total since okay. his rookie year. I got it. Maybe that was Aaron Rodgers' fault because oh, he's that, you, that, 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 that. Is that who it is? Yeah. That's how we're going to end Now the you show. finally blame a quarterback. That but is receivers it for not us. No time, Shannon. We'll be back okay. tomorrow morning at 930 Eastern with Ezekiel Elliott yeah. Tom right here in studio. No mercy. Thanks for listening to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm Jenny Taft. Join us again at the same time tomorrow morning, 930 Eastern. We'll see you then. Fox Sports. One of one. Of one. Of one. Of one.